into tonight's proceedings with 263 career tackles, the Wonder Boys active leader in that category. Arkansas Tech with an all-time record of 45-26-3 against UA Monticello, but last year it was the Bull Weevils who got the upper hand, upsetting the Wonder Boys 46-45 down in Monticello. The Wonder Boys are 4-3 and three against UAM during the Great American Conference era, and each of the last four meetings in this series have been decided by seven points or less. It's almost time for football at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. Here in the Team Clean broadcast booth, we will pause for one minute plus a station ID, and then it'll be time for football. You're listening to the Wonder Boys. The Wonder Boys won the opening toss and elected to receive the opening kickoff, and so Arkansas Tech will take the kickoff from UA Monticello, and the Wonder Boys will be moving from our left to our right toward the south goal and the bandstand here in the opening quarter of tonight's matchup between the Wonder Boys and the Bull Weevils. Back deep to return for Arkansas Tech. On the near side, it's Jant Weary, the senior out of Mesquite, Texas. And on the far side of the field, it is Isaac Disney, the freshman from Prairie Grove, set to kick it away for UA Monticello, is Josh Marini. He is a junior. Marini calls Austin, Texas home, 5'9", 165, a right-footed junior. He approaches the football, and we are underway in Russellville, a hooking kick that will go out of bounds on the near boundary, and Arkansas Tech will get to start at its own 35-yard line for the first possession of the night. The Wonder Boys averaging 18.6 points per game. That's tied for 10th most among the 12 Great American Conference members, but the Wonder Boys are piling up the yards, third in the GAC in total offense at 395 yards per game. The Wonder Boys are also third in the league in rushing offense at 177.8 yards per game. It's been some struggles in the red zone as Coach Monica has put it that have caused the Wonder Boys to leave some points off the board so far this year and we'll talk more about that red zone as the game unfolds and the Wonder Boys make their way inside the UAM 20. The UAM defense really crowding the line of scrimmage here on first down. Handoff for Brian Allen. He goes up the middle and dives out to the 38 yard line taken down by Deontay Haynes who reached out and tripped him up. The gain of three will make it second down and seven. Brian Allen came into the night with 3,144 career rushing yards, third most in Arkansas Tech history, also third most in Great American Conference history as he approaches some milestones. We'll bring you more updates on Brian. Second down and seven, Carter Burcham gives to Tramel Glasper on an end around, trying to get around the right end, and he'll be forced to the boundary by Dion Knox. And it will be third down and long for Arkansas Tech as Glasper is stopped at the 39-yard line following a gain of just one. And it'll be third down and six for Arkansas Tech. The Wonder Boys so far this season have converted on 34.1% of their third down conversion tries. That ranks seventh in the Great American Conference. Bircham looks to the near sideline for a new play call. He's joined in the backfield by Brian Allen. Receivers to the right side of the formation for Arkansas Tech are Trey Smith and Therese Hampton. Two more receivers to the far side of the field. Glasper and Disney are over there. Burcham has the snap. Here comes the pressure. He will step up and run for it. Eludes a wall of bull weevils. And now he's into the third level of the defense, into UAM territory at the 35-yard line. And he makes a right turn forced out of bounds by Dion Knox at the 36-yard line. The gain on the play is 25 yards as the pocket immediately collapsed on Carter Burcham. But he sensed that at just the right moment and escaped for the big run. And it is an Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down at the UAM 36. Burcham throws complete to 
Therese Hampton. Hampton makes the first man miss. The ball comes out. UAM has recovered the fumble inside the 30. Returning it up the near boundary is Christian Jefferson, and Jefferson is out of bounds near midfield, tackled there by Trey Smith as Therese Hampton made the reception for Arkansas Tech, but then fumbled it at the 27-yard line, and Christian Jefferson able to pick it up and return it 23 yards out to the 50, and that's where UAM will go on offense for the first time as the Wonder Boys now slip into a negative turnover margin overall on the season, now minus one on the turnover margin this year for Arkansas Tech. UA Monticello improves to minus four with that takeaway. And they are led onto the field by quarterback Cole Sears. Sears, the senior from Hoxie, fourth in the GAC in total offense this year at 254.4 yards per game. He's got two receivers to his right and one to his left. He fakes a handoff, now looks to throw deep down the near side. It is broken up by Jant Weary of Arkansas Tech. The intended receiver was C.J. Parham. And the incompletion will make it second down and 10 for UA Monticello from the 50-yard line. 13 minutes and 18 seconds to play in the first quarter. The first turnover of the game has been committed by Arkansas Tech. And now the Wonder Boys defense trying to get the football back. Sears will work from the shotgun. He is joined in the backfield by Juan Day getting the start at running back for UA Monticello. Two receivers right, one to the left. Four down linemen for the Wonder Boys. Sears wants to throw across the middle behind his intended receiver incomplete as he was trying to connect across the middle of the field with DeAndre Washington, but it fell incomplete. Good coverage on the play for Arkansas Tech by Chris Kale. And that brings up third down and 10 for UA Monticello. The line of scrimmage remains the Bull Weevils 50, or should, I should say remains the 50-yard line. UA Monticello this year, eighth in the conference in third down conversion rate at 31.6%. Third and 10 from the 50 for the Bull Weevils. Sears has the snap. Sears has time. Now pocket collapsing. Gets away from the first one, but not the second one. Quarterback sack for Arkansas Tech by Deidrick Dugan, the six foot, 230 pound freshman from Sulphur Springs, Texas, with the quarterback sack back at the UA Monticello 45 yard line. And following a loss of five, it is fourth down and 15, and the Bull Weevils will be forced to punt it away. Back deep to return for Arkansas Tech, and waiting at the 10 yard line is Isaac Disney. It is Sears who will handle the punting chore for UA Monticello. This is not unusual. He has punted quite often for them this year. Gets away an end over ender, a line drive that line lands at the 20, takes a big UAM bounce and roll, and will be downed inside the five. Arkansas Tech will be forced to start from its own two-yard line following a punt of 53 yards by Cole Sears. And as we bring Kelly Davis on board, Kelly, that's one of those cases where if you let that football bounce, you release control of your own destiny. Well, the the receiver in the in the in the back backfield had the chance to see where the coverage was coming from and how close they were, so he chose to let it go, and that's one of the chances you take. Hopefully, you get a bounce going back the other way, but it didn't happen this time. Time out on the field. No score in Russellville. In the Team Clean broadcast booth, we step aside for 30 seconds. This is Arkansas Tech football. First down and 10 for Arkansas Tech from its own two-yard line following the 53-yard punt by Cole Sears. And the Arkansas Tech offense will have to operate carefully here. Carter Burcham will work from a pistol formation with Brian Allen behind him. About time for a 98-yard drive. Wouldn't be a bad time at all. As Burcham brings him to the line of scrimmage, he's got one receiver to his right and one to his left. He will hand it off to Brian Allen. Allen between the tackles and out to the five-yard line. Dion Knox with the tackle. They're going to say his knee went down at the four. So a gain of two for Brian Allen. And it'll be second down and eight. And it's pretty clear from the way UA Monticello is playing it defensively here in the early going. They're going to force the Wonder Boys to beat them with the throw. They're committing a lot of people to stop the run. Yeah, they've got it packed in there. They're going to force them to pass. Whistles and penalty flags before the snap. A likely false start by Arkansas Tech. That is the case. That'll cost them half the distance to the goal. They'll give those two yards back. 
that Brian Allen just gained, and it'll be second down and 10 for Arkansas Tech from its own two-yard line, 12 minutes and seven seconds to go in the first quarter. No score. The Wonder Boys committing a turnover on their first possession, but then the defense able to get it right back. Handoff on second down and 10 will result in nothing, no gain on the play as the Wonder Boys playing it safe here in the shadow of their own goalposts. And Brian Allen was stacked up for no gain, and it'll be third and 10 for the Wonder Boys from their own two. And Kelly, now it becomes very much about creating just a little bit of room for Tyler Dunlop, the punter. Yeah, because you definitely want to try to get 15 yards deep for the punt uh, to play it safe. And we need to get a few yards here. On third down and 10, Bertram will throw. It is juggled and not caught. Incomplete, as they say, Therese Hampton could not get both hands around it, and it's out of bounds on the near boundary. And so it'll be fourth down and 10 for the Wonder Boys from their own two. And now it'll be key to protect punter Tyler Dunlop as the Wonder Boys special teams unit trots onto the field. Well, Tyler's going to be about 11, 11 and a half yards deep. You don't want to get on that back line for fear of taking a step back, creating a safety. Deep snapper here will be Richard Butler and Tyler Dunlop who's averaging 42.1 yards per punt, takes the snap and gets the punt away. And Good it is punt. a beauty, a high wobbly spiral. It is caught at the Arkansas Tech 46-yard line, returning it down the far boundary for UAM inside the 25-yard line before he is stopped. It is Trey Fleming on the punt return. And it will be first down and 10 UA Monticello at the Arkansas Tech 22, following a 24-yard punt return by Trey Fleming. And excellent field position for the Bull Weevils. And all of this set up by that turnover by Arkansas Tech. That is what has got this field position so much in the Bull Weevils' favor here in the early going. Cole Sears will work from the shotgun. On first down and 10 at the Arkansas Tech 22, the punt was 44 yards and the return, return was 24. Sears awaits the snap on first and 10 at the Tech 22. He will hand it off to Juan Day. Day goes up the middle inside the 20-yard line, stacked up the 19 following a gain of three. You don't want to give up too many yards and put them in a field goal situation where it's still a long field goal attempt. Geo Williams in on that stop for the Wonder Boys, along with K.J. Reed and George Brooks. It'll be second down and seven for UA Monticello. The line of scrimmage is the Arkansas Tech 19, 10 minutes and 45 seconds to go. No score in the first quarter at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. Sears sets up a screen pass. It is complete to Juan Day. Day trying to make the first man miss, but excellent defense for Arkansas Tech, as usual, by Quay Rose as he stayed right with the receiver and got him to the ground following a gain of just two. And it'll be third down and five for UA Monticello at the Arkansas Tech 17-yard line. And a, a great job there by Quay Rose not to get faked out. He did a good job. Played his position, stayed at home, only gave up minimal yards. Big third down here. Trey Fleming checks in at wide receiver for UAM. He comes to the near side of the field in the slot. Also out to the left for UA Monticello is C.J. Parham. On third down and five, Sears wants to throw, lobs it toward the end zone looking for Fleming. It is broken up, broken up for Arkansas Tech by Andrew Craig, the senior out of Corinth, Texas, will break it up and force UA Monticello into a field goal attempt here with nine minutes and 53 seconds to go in the opening quarter. The field goal kicker for UAM is Josh Marini. He is 0 for 1 on field goal tries so far this season. Almost, be almost a 35-yard attempt, maybe 34. Looks like they will set up for the hold at the 24-yard line, so that'll make it a 34-yard try here. But no, they're going to nope. back it up to the 30, 25 now. Back it, back it on up eight yards. So it'll be a 35-yard try for Marini from the right hash mark, kicking toward the north goal in the hole building. The kick is away. It is... Good, and our new score with nine minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first quarter is UA Monticello 3, Arkansas Tech 0. Here at the Team Clean Broadcast booth, we step aside for one minute. You're listening to the Wonder Boys.
Nine minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first quarter. UAM three, Arkansas Tech zero, following a four-play, five-yard scoring drive for the Bull Weevils. It took one minute and 26 seconds and resulted in the 35-yard field goal by Josh Marini, his first successful field goal attempt of the season. And now Jant Weary and Isaac Disney await the kickoff from Marini. His first try of this nature tonight went out of bounds. This one will remain on the field of play, and it'll be Weary from the six-yard line. Out over the 15, the 20, has a wall of blockers in front, follows those two blockers over the 25, and up to the 26-yard line at least. And so some pretty good field position here for the Wonder Boys offensively. And Arkansas Tech so far has picked up 40 yards of total offense. Got a flag on the kickoff up here. Might have been offside, so might get an additional five yards here. And... Looking for our referee, there he is, to let us know. They call it illegal motion. So they will tack five yards onto the end of that return. And the Wonder Boys will get to begin from their own 32-yard line under the direction of quarterback Carter Burcham. Tramel Glasper and Isaac Disney are the receivers to the right side of the formation. It's Therese Hampton out wide to the left. Hampton fifth in the conference in receptions and second in the league in receiving yards this year. He's averaging 90 receiving yards per game. Brian Allen, the running back. Allen gets the handoff around left end with some running room. 35, turns on the burners, 40. He's at midfield and will be forced out of bounds by Marshad Malankan at the UA Monticello 46-yard line. The gain on the play is 22 yards, and Arkansas Tech's Brian Allen has just become the second leading rusher in Great American Conference history. He has surpassed Romo Westbrook for second place in GAC history. Westbrook played his football at Harding University. On first down, Carter Burcham, bit of a busted play, rolling out to his right, and he will be able to get a yard out of it up to the 45-yard line of UA Monticello. And it'll be second down and nine from there. I believe he only needed, what, 15 yards to surpass or to tie. Got that, and now the, the only man in front of him on the GAC list is Devlin Wortham, who played at Southeastern Oklahoma State in recent years. He, um, Allen came into the night needing 310 yards to pass Wortham for the all-time GAC lead in career rushing. Pass to Therese Hampton complete from Carter Burcham. He has stood up at the 38-yard line following a gain of seven. Close to a first down, a little bit short. It'll be third down and two, third down and one, they say, for the Wonder Boys as they spot the football at the 37-yard line. So third down and one. Arkansas Tech is one for two on third down conversion tries so far tonight. And you would think this might be four down territory. Tanner Gaines is in the game to take the snap. Gaines will run straight ahead and run right into a UAM defender, and he will be stopped short of the yard to gain. The initial contact made for UA Monticello by Curtis Williams, and he was helped in that endeavor by Christian Jefferson and Jamel London. It looks like they're not going to take any chances this early in the game. A loss of one on the play makes it fourth down and two, and pooch punting specialist Carson Ayers is in the game for Arkansas Tech. UAM not even putting a receiver back. Now they put one on about the 20. Line of scrimmage is the UA Monticello 38 on fourth down and two. Ayers has the snap. The punt is away. It is high in the air. It will land at the 16-yard line. Takes an Arkansas Tech bounce and roll down inside the five-yard line, and it is Deandra Irvin who downs it at the two-yard line, and so an excellent job by Carson Ayers and the Arkansas Tech punt coverage unit as they pin the Bull Weevils at their own two-yard line following a 36-yard punt with seven minutes. I think I'll put it back at the one now. With seven minutes and 36 seconds to go in the first quarter and UAM leading three to nothing. Well, let's see if we can get a three and out like UAM did. Turn the field position here. Can make a big difference as Cole Sears brings the UAM offense back onto the field on first and ten from their own one. Sears has the snap. He will hand it off some running room up the middle to the seven-yard line for UA Monticello ball carrier Imani Riley. Riley came into the night averaging... 35.3 rushing yards per game, which leads UA Monticello. They are typically primarily a rushing, I should say typically primarily a passing offense as they are fourth in the conference in passing at 257 yards per game, eighth in the league in rushing. Sears on second down and about four looks to throw. It is complete for a UA Monticello first down 
out to the 13-yard line. Gain on the play is five after Riley picked up seven yards on first down. And it is first down and 10 for UA Monticello from its own 13-yard line as we go under seven minutes to play in the first quarter with the Bull Weevils in front three to nothing. Sears will have three receivers to his left. He is joined in the backfield by Imani Riley. Brings a man in motion. That's Ralph Singleton. He goes to the far side of the field. Sears has the snap, sets up a screen to Singleton, complete at the 10-yard line, 15, slipping tackles over the 20-yard line, and they say he stepped out of bounds at the 21. The gain on the play is eight, and it'll be second down and two for UA Monticello. Sears came into the night completing 51% of his passes. He had thrown for 1,190 yards, seven touchdowns, and four interceptions through the first five games of the year for the Bull Weevils. On second down and two, man in motion again is Singleton. And Singleton takes the handoff. He's around right end and will have enough for another UAM first down as he carries the football up to the 25-yard line. A pickup of three on second down and two. And UA Monticello will have its second first down of the game, both of them coming on this drive. That makes it a lot easier on an offense when you can gain eight yards on your first possession, first down. Sears awaits the snap on first and ten, and this is an example of so much for field position. The Bull Weevils had started their first two drives at the 50-yard line and at the Tech 22 and basically did nothing offensively. This time they started at their own one, and they've picked up two first downs. Sears throws. It is complete to Singleton at the 30-yard line. No, now they say he trapped it. He trapped it at the 30-yard line. Singleton doesn't agree, but it is ruled incomplete. Umpire making the call. He, was, he saw he had the best angle to see if it hit the ground or not, and he was able to see it. It'll make it second down and 10 for UA Monticello. The line of scrimmage remains the Bull Weevils 25. Golden Suns volleyball team was on the road this weekend, won at Northwestern Oklahoma State last night in straight sets, suffered a heartbreaking five-set loss today at Southwestern Oklahoma State. Sears on second down and 10, throws across the middle, complete to Singleton. Singleton with the reception and tackled at the 43-yard line. A gain of 18, another UAM first down, and it's first and 10 Bull Weevils at their own 43. Golden Suns with that one and one road trip, now 13 and eight overall this volleyball season. Six and three in the Great American Conference, and head coach Kira Dukic's team will be at home next weekend, 6 p.m. Friday against Oklahoma Baptist, and 2 p.m. next Saturday against Southern Nazarene at Tucker Coliseum. Handoff to Riley on first down and 10 for the Bull Weevils, and he gets a yard to the 44. Stop made for Arkansas Tech by Brian Scott and T.J. McPherson. And it'll be second down and nine for UA Monticello from its own 44. Second and nine, much better than second and two. Four minutes and 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. UAM leading three to nothing, and the Bull Weevils have the football. Sears from the shotgun, two receivers right, one to the left. He will fake the handoff to Riley, now throws across the middle, catch is made again by Singleton. Singleton has been a huge factor on this drive for UA Monticello. And he has the football in Arkansas Tech territory at the 46-yard line. It is a gain of 10, and it is enough for a UAM first down as they pick up their fourth first down of this drive. They had no yards of total offense before this possession, and now they're up to 53. 423 to play in our opening quarter. Receiver to the near side of the field for UA Monticello is Sylvester Augustine. They've got two receivers right. Amani Riley, the running back, lines up to the right of quarterback Cole Sears. On first and 10 from the Tech 46, Sears, pocket collapsing, rolls to his left, and he is sacked, taken down at the UAM 49-yard line for a loss of five by K.J. Reed, the senior out of Texarkana, with his seventh career quarterback sack. He now has two and a half sacks this season, and the sack will make it second down and 15 for UAM from its own 49. It was UAM that came into the day tied for the conference lead in quarterback sacks with 12. But the Wonder Boys have been getting after Cole Sears in the early going. That's already two sacks for the Arkansas Tech defense. It's a good way to catch up. Sears awaits the snap. 
He hands to Amani Riley. Riley with the lead block in front. Goes back into Arkansas Tech territory and is stopped at the 45-yard line following a gain of six. Gets the lost yards back, plus one. K.J. Reed in on that stop for the Wonder Boys. And it'll be third down and nine for UAM. The Bull Weevils 0 for 2 on third down conversion tries so far tonight. Three minutes to play in the first quarter. Three to nothing UAM is our score at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. UAM moving from our right to our left toward the north goal and the hole building. Sears throws far side complete to Riley out of the backfield and he is stuck at the 40 yard line. He's able to drag Dio Williams forward to the 38 yard line. It is a gain of eight. And decision time, early decision for UAM here. One, Wonder Boys will shuttle in some fresh defensive linemen and we'll see what the play call is here for UAM. They're gonna go On for third it. down and two. For, no, it is fourth down it and is two. Fourth down, it is fourth down and two. Dial it down now, flipping over fourth. It is fourth and two for the Bull Weevils. Line of scrimmage is the Arkansas Tech 38. And Sears and the UAM offense will go for it here. Sears takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. He throws incomplete behind his intended receiver as he was trying to connect over on the far side of the field. Good job, defense. And the incompletion will make it First down and 10 for Arkansas Tech from its own 38 as the Bull Weevils turn it over on downs. Had a staggered schedule today, Sam. Two finals already. Henderson State 56, Oklahoma Baptist 21. And a close one, Southern Arkansas 5-0, now 6-0, had a 21-16 victory over Southern Naz. Southern Naz was 1-4 coming into that game. First and 10, Wonder Boys. Bircham fakes to Allen. Midline option and Bircham runs up the middle to the Arkansas Tech 43 yard line for a gain of five. Stop made by Christian Jefferson of UA Monticello. Jefferson is UAM's leading tackler this season. Came into the day with 34 stops on the season. Second down and five, Arkansas Tech from its own 43. A minute 42 to go first quarter. UAM leading three to nothing. Bircham checking to the near side for the play call. Beaton relayed in by Manny Harris, his fellow quarterback for the Wonder Boys. Hand off to Brian Allen. Allen tries the middle and gets just one yard to the 44. Stopped there by UA Monticello's Deontay Haynes, junior linebacker with the tackle. And now it'll be third down and four for Arkansas Tech from its own 44-yard line. Two receivers left, two to the right. Brian Allen is the running back on third down and four. Option play left, Bircham keeps and he is stopped. Stopped for no gain. Hakeem Gray made the first contact for UAM. He was assisted by Anthony Walker. And after Bircham runs for no gain, it is fourth down and four and the Wonder Boys will be forced to punt it away. And it'll be Tyler Dunlop for the second time tonight to punt it. Dunlop's first punt of the evening traveled 44 yards, but was returned 24 yards by the man who waits at the 15 yard line, Trey Fleming. And that return set up the only score of the game so far. Good punt. High, beautiful spiral. Fair catch is called for and made by Fleming at his own 10 yard line. It is a 46 yard punt by Tyler Dunlop of Arkansas Tech. And the Bull Weevils, with 22 seconds remaining in the first quarter, will begin from their own 10. Next week, we will be in Alva, Oklahoma, Ranger Field, where the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys will take on the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers. Pre-game coverage on River Country KCJC and ArkansasTechSports.com begins at 1.30 next Saturday afternoon. And then we'll have the kickoff at 2 p.m. Sears on first and 10 from his own 10, fakes the handoff to Riley, goes up the middle and will be stopped after a very short gain. 15, Among the first Arkansas Tech defenders there. And currently it's in the fourth quarter, Northwest Oklahoma 17, East Central 7. Brian Scott and DeAnthony Phelan on that stop and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. UAM leads it three to nothing after 15 minutes here at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. In the Team Clean broadcast booth, we pause for 30 seconds. This is Arkansas Tech Football.
Second down and nine for UA Monticello from its own 11-yard line as we begin the second quarter of play. UAM through the first 15 minutes with 62 yards of total offense compared to 76 for Arkansas Tech. The Bull Weevils with four first downs. Two Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first downs so far. Both teams have been penalized just one time. And the only turnover of the game committed by Arkansas Tech it did not lead directly to UAM points. Second down and nine for UAM. Cole Sears awaits the snap. He's got two receivers to his left and one to his right. Sears throws far side of the field. A diving attempt made by Curtis Anderson, but he's unable to bring it into his body complete. And it'll be third down and nine for UA Monticello from its own 11-yard line. Congratulations goes out to the Golden Suns golf team, which earlier this week won the University of Central Oklahoma RCB Classic on Monday and Tuesday in Edmond, Oklahoma. The Golden Suns will conclude their fall season on Monday and Tuesday by competing in the Dallas Baptist University Fall Classic in Dallas, Texas. Third down and nine for Bull Weevils from their own 11. Sears will have four wide receivers from which to choose. He has the snap, has time, now rolling to his left from the goal line, throws incomplete into the far boundary, just throwing that one away as T.J. McPherson was closing in defensively for Arkansas Tech and forced Sears to unload that one into the far boundary to avoid, avoid the sack and possible safety. And so on fourth down and nine from their own 11-yard line, the Bull Weevils will have to punt it away with 14.48 to go in the second quarter and UAM leading 3 to nothing. Isaac Disney waits at the 50-yard line and punting it away for UAM will be Cole Sears. Sears takes a bit of a high snap, gets the punt away under some pressure, a line drive kick, takes one big bounce and lands in Disney's arms at midfield and he is immediately slammed to the turf. Good punt coverage for UA Monticello Leading that surge and getting him to the turf was Christian Jefferson, or at least I believe it's Christian Jefferson. UA Monticello has several players who wear the same number on offense and on defense, but when they're on special teams, it's a little bit difficult to know which one it is. First down and 10 is the, the situation for Arkansas Tech, and the line of scrimmage for the Wonder Boys is their own 49. 14-39 to go in the second quarter. UAM 3, Arkansas Tech 0. In Great American Conference action, Burcham hit as he throws. It is deflected and intercepted, picked off for UA Monticello at the 32-yard line. We're turning it down the far boundary, now cutting it back to the middle of the field is Jamel London. London is inside the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Burcham pursuing, and it is a touchdown, UA Monticello. Jamel London with the interception and unofficially 68-yard return for a UA Monticello touchdown. There are no penalty flags on the field. It was deflected at about the 35-yard line of UAM. And then the second defensive back for UAM picked it off. London made his way down the far boundary until he got into Arkansas Tech territory and then took a zigzag path, the final 50 yards for the Bull Weevils touchdown, and they lead it 9 to nothing, pending the extra point try. It will officially go down as a 70-yard interception return for a touchdown by Jamel London. And Josh Marini will attempt the extra point out of a hold by Terry Bozeman. Placement is down. Kick is away. It is good. And our new score with 14 minutes and 19 seconds to play in the second quarter is UA Monticello 10 and Arkansas Tech 0. Here in the Team Clean broadcast booth, we pause for 30 seconds. You're listening to the Wonder Boys. A 70-yard interception return by Jamel London of UA Monticello for the touchdown has made it 10 to nothing Bull Weevils. And it's a little bit of a deja vu feeling right now at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field. The last time the Wonder Boys were at home on September the 22nd, they fell behind 
10 to nothing against Southern Nazarene University before coming back to win that one 24 to 10. And it is once again an early 10 point deficit for the Wonder Boys that they will have to overcome at home. Glad you are with us this evening on River Country KCJC and ArkansasTechSports.com. It'll be Josh Marini to kick it away for the Bull Weevils. Jant Weary and Isaac Disney wait at the five yard line of Arkansas Tech with 14 19 to play until halftime. Elsewhere in the conference, Southeastern Oklahoma State leads Southwestern Oklahoma State 31 to 20 with 10 minutes left in that ball game. And in Alva, Oklahoma, with eight and a half minutes to go, Northwestern Oklahoma State is in front of East Central 17 to 7. Jant Weary takes the kickoff at the three-yard line out over the 15, the 20, sidesteps one bull weevil, but then is taken down around the 27-yard line. Special team stop made for UA Monticello by Ivan King, senior defensive back. And it'll be first down and 10 Wonder Boys from their own 27. The game of the night and the game of the day in the Great American Conference being played in Searcy between nationally sixth-ranked Washita Baptist and nationally 19th-ranked Harding. And right now it is the homestanding Harding Bisons with a three to nothing lead over the Washita Tigers with 10 minutes to go in the second quarter at First Security Stadium in Searcy. Wonder Boys from their own 27. Carter Burcham will hand it off, running up the middle for Arkansas Tech out to the 29 yard line for a gain of two. It was Brian Allen. Allen came into the night averaging 86.6 .6 rushing yards per game this season. That is third most in the Great American Conference. His 114.8 all-purpose yards per game, second most in the league. Penalty flags at the snap of the football. Another handoff to Brian Allen, and this time he is stacked up for no gain at the 29. It'll bring up third down and eight pending the outcome of that penalty flag. Referee will check with his colleagues and let us know that it was a false start committed by Arkansas Tech. And they have declined that penalty. And so it will be third down and eight for Arkansas Tech from its own 29-yard line. The Wonder Boys have two large young men standing and shielding Manny Harris as he relays in the play calls. They have two big sheets that they're holding up to protect Harris and prevent anyone from seeing what the play signals might be. On third and eight, Burcham under some pressure rolls to his right. And now he will just run for it down the far boundary. Made one man miss, makes two man miss, and he's out to the 44-yard line. A scramble by Carter Burcham for a gain of 15 yards and an Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down at the Wonder Boys 44-yard line. Great scramble there by Carter Burcham. Burcham with that run. Now five carries for 46 yards tonight. Now another running play. Brian Allen gets the carry. He runs right and goes out of bounds in UA Monticello territory. Down at the 42-yard line. He picks up a chunk of 14 yards. It's another Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down. And the Wonder Boys are in Bull Weevil territory. First down and 10 at the 42 with 12.43 to play in the second quarter. And UAM leading 10 to nothing. Handoff Allen tripped up in the backfield, able to fall forward to the line of scrimmage for no gain. Integral in that stop for UA Monticello was Curtis Williams. And it'll be second down and 10 for the Wonder Boys at the UAM 42. Burcham awaits the snap. Christian Cole is in as the running back. Cole takes the handoff and never had a chance. It's that same man, Curtis Williams, coming through to make the stop in the backfield. Christian Cole stopped at the UA Monticello 47-yard line for a loss of five, and that makes it third down and 15, so an extra wide receiver, Trey Smith, will check in. Halfback Chris Eastburn checks out. Three receivers to the left side of the formation. Therese Hampton is out wide to the right. It's Smith, Disney, and Glasper to the left side. Burcham rolls that direction under pressure, now reverses field, sets himself, and throws it away as he was under a heavy rush being pursued from behind by Brandon Young. And then once a second bull weevil got in on the act, Burcham knew it was time to get rid of the football. And that second weevil who came in to pursue Burcham 
is lying on his back on the turf. It looks to be Hakeem Gray, the senior defensive lineman who transferred to UAM from Louisiana Tech University, and they'll bring out the trainers to tend to him while they do. Here in the Team Clean broadcast booth, we pause for 30 seconds. UAM leading 10 to nothing, 11.40 to go, second quarter. You're listening to the Wonder Boys. Look like perhaps Hakeem Gray just got the wind knocked out of him. He's able to get back to his feet and head to the far boundary under his own power. And now on fourth down and 15 from the UAM 47-yard line, Carson Ayers will be called upon for his pooch punting acumen once more. His first punt of the night was downed at the one-yard line after traveling 37 yards. This one is angled toward the far boundary. It will land inside the 20, takes a big bounce and roll forward, makes a bit of a left turn at the five, and is downed there for Arkansas Tech by Deandra Irvin. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Bull Weevils from their own five-yard line with 11 minutes and 29 seconds to go in the second quarter. UA Monticello 10 and Arkansas Tech 0 is our score. Some confusion now as to where the football should be, and the official is indicating touchback. The Wonder Boys quite clearly had the first touch at the five-yard line. Here's the referee to let us know. He says touchback. And he also says we've got time out on the field. So UAM, instead of starting from its own five, will start from its own 20 when we come back. 11-29 to go second quarter. UAM leads 10 to nothing back in one minute here at the Team Clean Broadcast booth. This is Arkansas Tech football. So after the touchback call, it is first down and 10 for UA Monticello from its own 20-yard line with 11 minutes and 29 seconds to go in the second quarter. And the Bowl Weevils out in front of the Wonder Boys 10 to nothing. And for a second consecutive home game, the Wonder Boys will be required to come from back from a 10-point deficit. Cole Sears in the shotgun. He will... Fake the handoff. Now Sears under pressure, has to get rid of it toward the near boundary, incomplete. He did have a receiver in the vicinity in the person of Malcolm Staten. But excellent pressure on the passer by, among others, Andrew Craig, forcing Sears to get rid of that football. And it'll be second down and 10 for UAM from its own 20. Sears, so far tonight, has completed six of 14 passes for 51 yards. Ralph Singleton has been his top target with three catches for 36 yards. One receiver right, two to the left on second down and 10. Handoff is to Amani Riley. Riley runs left and has stood up at the 23-yard line following a gain of three. Geo Williams in on that stop for Arkansas Tech along with Harrison Lester. Lester, a senior defensive lineman out of Clinton. And it'll be third down and seven for the Bull Weevils from their own 23. They are 0 for 4 on third down conversion tries so far tonight. 10 minutes and 56 seconds to go. Second quarter, UAM on a 35-yard field goal by J Josh Marini and a 70-yard interception return for a touchdown by Jamel London. 
They lead it 10 to nothing. Awaiting the snap on third down and seven from his own 23 is Cole Sears, the Wonder Boys show blitz. Now they'll back off. Sears throws far side. It is dropped at the 26-yard line. I'm not sure it was going to be enough for a first down anyway, but the UAM intended receiver unable to haul it in. And the incompletion will make it fourth down and seven for UAM. And Cole Sears will be required to punt it away from his own 23-yard line. Sears so far tonight has punted one time, or should say two times, for an average of 46 yards per punt. And he will, well, actually it may be Marini this time. Josh Marini is lining up in punt formation, and so a, a change here for UAM Marini so far this season has punted 20 times, but only for an average of 33.6 yards per try. UAM right at the bottom in terms of net punting in the Great American Conference this season. And there is an injured bull weevil on the play. The intended receiver on that third down play took a pretty good lick as the football was arriving. They were able to get him back to his feet over on the far sideline. That is DeOntario Brown, a junior for UA Monticello out of Columbus, Mississippi. And he it looks like he may be okay. They will... Give him a look over on that far sideline, and we will return to play with fourth down and seven. And Josh Marini on to punt for the first time for UAM after Cole Sears handled the first two. The snap is on target. The punt is away. It is a wobbly kick that will land in UAM territory, and the Bull Weevils are able to down it at their own 43-yard line. And so only a punt of 20 yards by Josh Marini. Good pressure on the punter by, among others, Christian Cole of Arkansas Tech, forcing that short punt. And the Wonder Boys have a short field here, and it would certainly help their business to take advantage with 10 minutes and 22 seconds to go in the second quarter, and UAM leading 10 to nothing. Carter Burcham, the quarterback, clapping his hands to encourage his teammates. He's got two receivers to his right. Turns, hands to Brian Allen. Allen between the tackles. Down to the 41-yard line for a pickup of two. UAM tackle made by Gabe Brace and Stephen King. Wonder Boys want to go quickly on second down and eight. Hand off to Allen. Delayed hand off, and he's got room up the middle. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, and Brian Allen is gone into the end zone. A touchdown run of 41 yards for the senior from Forest City, Brian Allen on the delayed handoff from Carter Burcham, and that slight delay seemed to throw off all of the timing defensively for the Bull Weevils, and it created a huge hole for Allen to run through, and he took advantage for his 23rd career rushing touchdown, and for Arkansas Tech, it is another Phil Wright Autoplex Fireworks Wonder Boys touchdown. Phil Wright Autoplex, an honest deal at an honest price. The extra point will be attempted by Carson French. Placement is down. Kick is away. It is good. And our new score with 9 minutes and 57 seconds to play in the second quarter is UAM 10, Arkansas Tech 7. In the Team Clean Broadcast booth, we pause for 30 seconds. This is Wonder Boys football. The scoring drive for Arkansas Tech, two plays, 43 yards. It took 25 seconds and resulted in a 41-yard touchdown run by Brian Allen. We mentioned that that was his 23rd career rushing touchdown, his second rushing touchdown of his senior season. And now the Wonder Boys are back within 10-7, to seven, and Carson French set to kick the football back to the Bull Weevils. He sends it on its way. High end over ender that will drive the return man for the Bull Weevils, Trey Fleming, five yards deep into his end zone, and he wisely takes a knee there for a touchback. 
And it will be first down and 10, UA Monticello from its own 25-yard line. As the 41-yard touchdown run by Brian Allen has got the Wonder Boys on the scoreboard. Arkansas Tech now with 145 yards of total offense, 128 of those of the rushing variety. And the Wonder Boys have picked up five Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down so far. On first down and 10 from the UAM 25, UAM quarterback Cole Sears will be in the shotgun formation. He's got two receivers to his left and one to his right. Sears takes the snap, hands it off to Juan Day. Day runs left and drags tackler George Brooks up to the 30-yard line, a gain of five. T.J. McPherson helping on that stop for Arkansas Tech. And it'll be second down and five for the Bull Weevils from their own 30. Nine minutes and 39 seconds to go second quarter. Still three to nothing, Harding over Washita Baptist late in the second quarter of that one now. And Harding about to get the football back. On second down and five here, Cole Sears checks to the far sideline, wants a new play call with 13 on the play clock. Two receivers to his right, one to his left, ball on the left hash mark. Handoff and running room up the middle for Day. Day into the secondary. He'll have enough for a first down, a gain of 10 up to the 40-yard line for Juan Day. Stop made for Arkansas Tech by Brian Scott. And it'll be first and 10 bull weevils. From their own 40, the first downs are now even at five apiece. UAM with 80 yards of total offense, 51 passing yards, and 29 rushing yards so far for UA Monticello. Sears fakes a handoff, throws far side of the field, catches made of the 43. First defender for the Wonder Boys misses, and that will allow UAM to pick up a first down out of bounds with that reception on the far side of the field. In Arkansas Tech territory at the 48-yard line, it is Curtis Anderson. The gain on the play is 12 yards. It is the sixth first down of the game for the Bull Weevils, and they've got it first and 10 at the Tech 48. Cole Sears now 7 of 16 passing for 63 yards. And he awaits the snap on first and 10 from the Tech 48. Sears. Hands to Juan Day, penalty flag at the snap of the football. Day is stopped for no gain. Tackle made for Arkansas Tech by Geo Williams. And now we wait to see what the penalty flag indicates. Here's the referee to let us know. After just a little bit of discussion, he wants to check with the Arkansas Tech sideline and see what Coach Raymond Monica wants to do. Illegal formation is the call against UA Monticello. And so Coach Monica elects to accept that penalty and back him up five yards into UA Monticello territory at the 47-yard line. And from there, it'll be first down and 15 for UAM. Second penalty against UAM for a total of 10 yards. Arkansas Tech has been also been penalized twice in the early going. Sears on first and 15 from his own 47. Hands it off, Juan Day trying to get around right in, made the first man miss, but was tripped up and able to fall forward to the 50-yard line. A good job by Day. When it looked like he might be beaten on that edge, able to get a hand on the ankle of Juan Day and get him to the turf after a gain of just three. And it'll be second down and 12 for UA Monticello. Seven minutes and 30 seconds to go in the second quarter. UA Monticello 10, Arkansas Tech 7 from Thone Stadium at Merkel Field in Russellville. The next time the Wonder Boys are at home, it'll be homecoming two Saturdays from now. A 2 p.m. kickoff on October 20th against Southwestern Oklahoma State. Sears to throw toward the near boundary. His intended receiver slipped as he came out of his break. Jant Weary was there with the coverage on that intended receiver along the near boundary. And the incomplete pass will make it third down and 12 for UA Monticello. The intended receiver was Jeremy Hampton. And it stops the clock with seven minutes and nine seconds to go until halftime. Stay with us at the intermission. We will bring you a, at least a portion of the halftime performance by the Arkansas Tech Marching Band, Arkansas's Band of Distinction. 
Third down and 12 for UAM. They still haven't picked up a third down conversion all night. Sears sets, throws across the middle. A diving try made inside the Arkansas Tech 30, and they say he have it. He, they say he has it. Completed pass across the middle to Curtis Anderson. He makes a sliding grab at the Arkansas Tech 29-yard line, a gain of 21 on third down and 12. And the Bull Weevils pick up their first third down conversion of the night. They're now one out of six. And it's first down and 10 Bull Weevils at the Arkansas Tech 29. Sears with two receivers to his left, one to his right. Amani Riley is the running back. Sears fakes to Riley, throws a screen pass complete to the far side. The receiver lowers his head and gets down to the 25-yard line before he is stacked up and driven backwards. That was C.J. Parham on the reception. Stopped at the 25 after a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Among that wall of Arkansas Tech defenders there to make the stop was Deandra Irvin and Quay Rose. And it is second down and six UAM at the Tech 25. Huge third down conversion pass for that gain of 21 a moment ago from Cole Sears to Curtis Anderson. Sears now 8 of 18 passing for 80, or I should say 9 of 19 passing for 88 yards. On second down and 6, man in motion to the far side of the field, Curtis Anderson. Sears fakes a screen to him, now comes back to him on second thought, and it is incomplete. Jant weary with the coverage as the pass goes sailing out of bounds on the far sideline. Sears faked the screen, looking then to try to throw the deep ball, but the Wonder Boys had it well covered. And so he had to check back down to Anderson. And the incompletion makes it third down and six. The line of scrimmage remains the Arkansas Tech 25. If they gained nothing else and wanted to try a field goal from here, it would be about a 42 or 43-yard try. Sears relays an audible to his receivers to the right side of the formation. Play clock is down to 10. Now Sears takes the snap. Sears looking right, throwing right into the end zone. It is broken up, and a penalty flag is thrown. The intended receiver for UA Monticello was Trey Fleming, and the official there with the look at it said that he was interfered with. And so it is going to be a penalty against Arkansas Tech for pass interference that will extend this bowl weevil drive with five minutes and 39 seconds to go in the second quarter. And UAM's hopes of adding to its 10 to 7 lead on this possession will remain very much alive. Let's see what the referee has to say about the placement. They will advance it 15 yards down to the 10. Important there as to whether or not that infraction occurred in the end zone or not. They ruled that it did not. And so just a 15 yard penalty down to the 10. And Cole Sears will line up in the shotgun on first down and goal. Sears sends a man in motion to the left side. That's tight end Oren Walsh. Sears will throw it into the end zone. It is caught, foot down, inbounds, touchdown UA Monticello. Ten yard touchdown reception made by Jeremy Hampton of UAM. Cole Sears with his first touchdown pass of the night, his eighth touchdown pass of the season. Hampton gets his third touchdown reception. And now Josh Marini will come out to try to tack on the extra point for the Bull Weevils with five minutes and 33 seconds remaining in the second quarter, and their lead now up to 16 to seven. Marini has connected on one extra point so far tonight. He has also made a 35 yard field goal and a chance here to get the UAM lead back up to 10 points. The placement is down, the kick is away. It is good, penalty flag is thrown. I believe the Wonder Boys may be called for running into the kicker. We'll wait and see as the referee is going to discuss it with some of his colleagues here with five minutes and 33 seconds remaining. It was definitely a post-play penalty. The kick is good. The running into the kicker is declined, and so no penalty will be enforced. And our new score with five minutes and 33 seconds to go in the second quarter is UAM 17 and Arkansas Tech 7. At the Team Clean broadcast booth, we step aside for 30 seconds. This is Arkansas Tech football.
number 13, Jack Murray, and number 14, Isaac Jersey, each receive for Arkansas Tech. Number 19, Josh Marie, will kick off for the O'Brien. It was a nine-play, 75-yard scoring drive for UA Monticello that consumed four minutes and 24 seconds, resulting in the 10-yard touchdown pass from Cole Sears to Jeremy Hampton. Now the return for Arkansas Tech by Jant Weary from the eight-yard line. He's out to the 25, made a little spin move back at the 20, and gets out to the 29-yard line, taken down there by Lloyd Turner, senior defensive back for UA Monticello. And it'll be first and 10 Wonder Boys from their own 29-yard line, UA Monticello will get the football first to begin the second half. And so it would certainly be advantageous from a momentum standpoint for the Wonder Boys to be able to go down and get some points on the board here right before halftime. Right now it's 17-7, UA Monticello with the lead. Bertram turns, hands to Brian Allen. Allen bounces it to the outside and is wrestled down for no gain at the 29-yard line. Excellent pursuit and a stop made for UA Monticello by Michael Jenkins. Jenkins is a freshman defensive lineman from Crossett. And on second and 10, the Wonder Boys will try again from the 29. Penalty flag thrown on a screen to Isaac Disney. Disney advances the football four yards to the 33. But I fear the penalty is likely against Arkansas Tech. Referee will let us know momentarily with five minutes and three seconds to go in the second quarter. And UAM out to a 10-point lead. Here's a referee to let us know. Illegal motion is the call against Arkansas Tech. UAM declines that penalty. Is the initial indication from the referee. HUD Jackson, the UAM head coach, now not as sure about that. Correction, now UAM will accept that penalty. And so it will... Remain second down. Had a choice there between third down and five or second down and 15. And Coach Jackson, after some contemplation, elected to go second down and 15 for his opposition. And so the Wonder Boys will snap it from their own 24-yard line with 4.58 to go in the half. Bertram throws across the middle, and it is incomplete. And penalty flag comes sailing in from behind. Therese Hampton was the intended receiver, and the UAM defensive back, was impeding his progress. It'll either be holding or pass interference against UA Monticello. Here with 4.53 to go in the half, it will be the third penalty against the Bull Weevils. Both of these teams rank in the bottom half of the conference in penalty avoidance. Holding against UAM at an automatic first down. It will move the football up to the Arkansas Tech 34-yard line. And it is an Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down, the sixth of the game for the Wonder Boys. Carter Burcham will work from a pistol formation with Brian Allen behind him. Bull Weevils crowding the line of scrimmage defensively as they have done all night long. Burcham gives to Allen. Allen runs left, lowers that left shoulder and makes his way out to the 37-yard line for a pickup of three. Among those there to make the stop for UA Monticello was Brian Pottier. Brandon Pottier, I should say. My, my apologies. Second down and seven. Bertram turns. Hands off. Running up the middle is Brian Allen to the 41-yard line. He picks up four yards. And from there, it'll be third down and three for the Wonder Boys. Clock rolling, four minutes and 14 seconds to go. In the second quarter, UA Monticello 17, Arkansas Tech 7. At Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville, glad you're with us tonight on River Country, KCJC, and ArkansasTechSports.com. Burcham in a pistol formation. Allen behind him. Fakes the handoff. Lobs it near side for Hampton. It is batted away. Incomplete. Broken up for UA Monticello by Lloyd Turner. It'll make it fourth down and three. And the Wonder Boys have no choice at their own 41-yard line but to send out Tyler Dunlop to punt it away. UAM defensive back Kelvin Brown shaken up on the play, and he will hop off the field to the far sideline, unable to put a lot of weight on his left leg right now. And members of the UAM athletic training staff will give him a look. 
as Tyler Dunlop checks in to punt it away for Arkansas Tech on fourth and three from the Wonder Boys 41 yard line. Dunlop's two punts tonight have averaged 45 yards per try. And it looks like we have whistles and a timeout has been called by UA Monticello. We will take a 30 second break with them here in the Team Clean broadcast booth. This is Arkansas Tech football. Following the UA Monticello timeout, it is fourth down and three for the Wonder Boys from their own 41-yard line. And Tyler Dunlop to set to punt it away for Arkansas Tech. Waiting at his own 20-yard line for UA Monticello is Trey Fleming. The punt is away. Fleming calls for and makes a fair catch at his own 24-yard line, so it is a 35-yard punt by Dunlop. And now UA Monticello will have three minutes and 43 seconds and two timeouts as they look to add to their 17-7 lead before halftime. And a reminder, the Bull Weevils will get the football to start the second half. And so just as we discussed a moment ago, it would be helpful for the Wonder Boys offense to go down and get some points. Now it would certainly be nice if the Tech defense could get a stop here. Chris Kale has checked in the Arkansas Tech secondary. It certainly has been nice to have him back in recent weeks after he missed the first part of the season due to injury. Cole Sears hands it off to Amani Riley on first down. Riley tries to get around left end, but Andrew Craig has other ideas. He drops him at the 24-yard line for no gain. And it'll be second down and 10 for UA Monticello. Fine play there by Andrew Craig, senior defensive back out of Corinth, Texas, who has made, came into the night with already a career-high 29 tackles this season, topping the 27 tackles he had a year ago. And this year of his 29 tackles, six and a half of them have been for a loss. Sears on second and 10 wants to throw. It is caught over the 35-yard line. It'll be enough for a bull weevil first down. Reception made at the 37 for a gain of 13 by Sylvester Augustine. And Augustine's catch moves the chains for UAM. It's first and 10 bull weevils from their own they're going to put it at the 38. So a pickup of 14 as Sears goes over 100 yards passing here in the first half. And now he has the football again. Hands to Riley. Riley up the middle, tackled by Andrew Craig at the 42-yard line, a pickup of four on first down. And it'll be second and six for the Weevils from their own 42. Clock rolling, two minutes and 30 seconds to go, second quarter. UAM 17, Arkansas Tech 7. Bull Weevils have gotten a 35-yard field goal from Josh Marini, a 70-yard interception return for a touchdown by Jamel London, and a 10-yard touchdown pass from Cole Sears to Jeremy Hampton. Handoff to Amani Riley on second down, and he is up the middle. They say his knee went down at the 44-yard line, so he only got two yards out of it. And now it's third down and four for UAM. Bull Weevils one out of six on third down conversions so far in the first half. This time they need to get the football to their own 48 to pick up the first down. Under two minutes to go in the half. Sears in the shotgun, two receivers to his right. Ball on the left hash mark. They're going from our left to our right toward the south goal and the bandstand. Quarterback draw. Sears is wrapped up from behind and stopped after a gain of just one. Excellent spy job on the quarterback for Arkansas Tech by Brian Scott. As he makes the stop, forces fourth down, and the Wonder Boys call timeout to preserve some of the final minute and 33 seconds of this half. UAM leads it 17-7. to In the Team Clean broadcast booth, we step aside for 30 seconds. You're listening to the Wonder Boys.
Fourth down and three for UA Monticello from its own 45-yard line. One minute and 33 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Bull Weevils in front 17 to seven, back deep to return. For Arkansas Tech University is Tyrus Fort, freshman out of Rockwall, Texas. Josh Marini, the punter. His punt is away, nearly blocked by DeAndra Irvin. Fair catch is called for and made by Fort at his own 26-yard line. And so the punt by Marini travels 31 yards. And DeAndra Irvin just, I say it was DeAndra Irvin. Let me double-check that number for you. Yes, it was DeAndra Irvin who almost blocked that punt. Matter of fact, it looked like the official indicated that he did graze it with his hand. And so it'll be first down and 10 for the Wonder Boys from their own 26-yard line. Burcham hands to Justin Bailey, and his first carry of the night does not go well as he was greeted in the backfield and dropped for a loss, sliding through to make that stop for UA Monticello was Brandon Young. Tackle is made back at the 22-yard line for a loss of four. It is second down and 14. It didn't go well, but it was not because of any fault of Justin Bailey. He never had a chance. Burcham, pocket collapsing. He's going to run for it out over the 30 and stumbles down at the 32-yard line, a pickup of 10 for Burcham. It'll bring up third down and short for the Wonder Boys. And UA Monticello wants timeout. 55 seconds left in the half. Bull Weevils lead 17-7. In the Team Clean broadcast booth, we pause for 30 seconds. This is Arkansas Tech football. Fifty-five seconds remaining in the second quarter. UA Monticello 17, Arkansas Tech 7 is our score from Thone Stadium at Burkle Field. As the Arkansas Tech offense returns to the field on third down and four. Need to get to their own 36 in order to pick up the first down. Carter Burcham has two receivers to his right and two to his left. Burcham looking, pump fake, now rolling right. He will have to run for it, and he stopped short of the yard to gain. Tackle made for UA Monticello near the far boundary by Gabe Brace. Burcham is down at the 33-yard line with a gain of one, and timeout has been called by UA Monticello with 46 seconds left in the half. The Wonder Boys will punt when we come back in 30 seconds here at the Team Clean Broadcast booth. This is Arkansas Tech Football. Forty-six seconds remaining in the second quarter. UA Monticello 17 and Arkansas Tech 7. As the Wonder Boys set to punt it away on fourth down and short, it'll be Tyler Dunlop to punt it away. Trey Fleming waits at his own 28 for UAM. A dandy punt by Dunlop. Fleming backpedaling, fields it at his own 16-yard line, surrounded by two Wonder Boys, tries to make a move up the middle between the two of them, but Jant Weary wrestles him to the turf at the 22-yard line, and that's where UA Monticello will take over with 35 seconds left in the half. They have no timeouts. They're in the lead 17-7, and I can't imagine they will do anything too cute here, especially considering the fact that they get the football to begin the third quarter of play here tonight at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. A reminder, at halftime, we will have the performance by the Arkansas Tech Marching Band, Arkansas's Band of Distinction. We'll also take a look at the numbers from the first half and bring you up to date on the Great American Conference scoreboard. Sears takes a knee. Wonder Boys have two timeouts left, but it does not look like they wish to extend the first half. And UA Monticello does not have to snap the football again if it does not want to. Coach Raymond Monica talking things over with one of the officials on the near sideline. 
They spot the football ready for play at the 20-yard line. And UAM does not look like it is inclined to snap the football again here in the first half. We have played two quarters of football at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. And for a second consecutive home game, the Wonder Boys will have to overcome a 10-point halftime deficit. Our score tonight is UA Monticello 17 and Arkansas Tech 7. In the Team Clean broadcast booth, we step aside for two minutes. Let's make that three minutes, my apologies. Back in three minutes, this is Arkansas Tech football. Back with you at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville where we are at halftime and the UAM Bull Weevils lead the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys by a score of 17 to 7. Right now, several individuals, alumni and faculty members and other supporters of Arkansas Tech University being recognized down on the field by Arkansas Tech University President Dr. Robin E. Bowen for their challenge gifts to get the Arkansas Tech Signature Weekend of Giving underway. That is going to take place October 18th through the 21st in conjunction with the Arkansas Tech Homecoming 2018 celebration and you can go to www.atualumni.com to learn more about ways in which you can support the Arkansas Tech Foundation and the mission of student success and student access at Arkansas Tech University just like these individuals down the field have done with their challenge gift to get the signature weekend of giving underway. Those weekend of giving donations here in a couple of weeks, those can go to benefit any academic college on the campus. One of the other things that they can go to support is the Fight On Fund, which is a great thing we started here at Arkansas Tech about three or four years ago. And that Fight On Fund 
is utilized when you have a student here at Arkansas Tech who is facing some kind of unexpected hardship that may prevent them from being able to continue with their studies and persist to graduation. That Fight On Fund was established for just those situations. I, I know personally a student a couple of years ago who lost pretty much everything in a house fire, and were it not for that Fight On Fund, she may not have been able to continue in her studies, and now she is a teacher in the Russellville School District because the Fight On Fund allowed her to persist in her studies. And so that's just one example of what you can do with your private support of the Arkansas Tech University Foundation during the signature weekend of giving, October 18th through the 21st, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that next weekend when we are in Alva, Oklahoma, for the Wonder Boys final road game before we celebrate homecoming here in a couple of weeks. Right now, it is almost time to turn down my microphone and turn up the crowd mic and allow you to enjoy the halftime performance by the Arkansas Tech Marching Band, Arkansas's Band of Distinction, under the direction of Dr. Daniel Belongia and Dr. James Dodders, the voice of the Arkansas Tech Band is Dr. John Clements, and we will turn it over to Dr. Clements for the halftime performance by the Arkansas Tech University Marching Band. Intrepid passengers, a computer named Hal, a ship called Enterprise, and Mars and Jupiter. What do they have in common? They come from outer space. We present the first selection of our halftime show with music inspired by space, the final frontier. Undeniably, one of the most beloved melodies in the world, the Jupiter Chorale. Our journey through space. We visit Van Morrison's 1970 hit album. The title track of the album has been heard in the movies An American Werewolf in London, and it's also been covered by artists such as Michael Bublé, Herb Albert, Bobby McFerrin, and even Kathy Lee Gifford. Featuring the best distinctions color guard and made red, here is Moonbang.
Matt Pickapocky, Holden Jones, and Corey Nolan on the trombone, Bo Hamilton on drums. Let's dance the moon dance. Band. We are the Arkansas Tech University Marching Band, Arkansas Band of Distinction! That is the Arkansas Tech University Marching Band, Arkansas's Band of Distinction at halftime tonight at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. Here in the Team Clean broadcast booth, we will step aside for three minutes and then come back with a look at the halftime numbers. UAM leads 17 to seven, and this is Arkansas Tech football. Uh, Sam stepped out just for a second. Okay, I will. He he may have ran down to, he might have actually gone to the restroom. So, but I will tell him whatever adjustments he made works. Oh, okay. 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 Sounds awesome. I will let him know. Thank you.
Back at halftime at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville, UA Monticello 17 and Arkansas Tech 7. Before we bring you the numbers from the first half, I want to send along a very special congratulations to a member of the Arkansas Tech family who celebrated a milestone last night and began work on getting up to 1,000 games tonight. <clears throat> Big shout out to Mr. Craig Fleming. He has been volunteering on the chain crew here at Arkansas Tech and over at Russville. Russellville High School recognized him yesterday as their volunteer of the year uh, at the athletic banquet, the Russellville Hall of, Hall of Fame banquet, which was at uh, uh, a luncheon, and uh, they honored him as well. So tonight, he keeps adding to that total. He has reached number 501 tonight. So, like you said, hope he reaches that 1,000. So congratulations, Mr. Craig Fleming. He has been very, very supportive of both uh, Arkansas Tech and Russellville High School Athletics and volunteering his time and especially being on the chain crew. So far tonight, UA Monticello with the upper hand, 17 to seven over Arkansas Tech. Here are the numbers so far. The Bull Weevils with nine first downs, Arkansas Tech with six, UAM 37 rushing yards, 112 passing yards, for 149 yards of total offense. Arkansas Tech, 142 rushing yards, 17 passing yards for 159 yards of total offense. There has been, there have, have been, I should say, two turnovers in the game, and both of them have been committed by Arkansas Tech, one on a lost fumble and one on an interception. Arkansas Tech has been penalized four times for 22 yards, Three penalties for 20 yards against UA Monticello. The Bull Weevils have held the football for 16 minutes and 47 seconds, despite the fact they are just one out of seven on third down conversions. Arkansas Tech has had the football for 13 minutes and 13 seconds. Arkansas Tech is two out of eight on third down conversions to this point. Individual leaders for Arkansas Tech, Brian Allen, 13 carries for 93 yards, including a 41-yard touchdown run. Carter Burcham has rushed seven times for 57 yards, and through the air, Burcham is two of six for 17 yards. Both of his completions have gone to Therese Hampton. Defensive leaders for Arkansas Tech include K.J. Reed with six tackles and a quarterback sack, and Quay Rose with five tackles so far. Juan Day is UAM's leading rusher, four carries for 21 yards, Cole Sears has completed 11 of 22 passes for 112 yards and a touchdown. Ralph Singleton has three catches for 36 yards. And then Curtis Anderson and Sylvester Augustin have two catches apiece for the Bull Weevils. Their leading tackler so far is Christian Jefferson with five tackles. Before we get ready for the second half, we look to Kelly Davis for an update from the Great American Conference scoreboard. We did have a staggered schedule today. Two games started at 2 o'clock. Those finals, it was a close one. Southern Arkansas 21, Southern Nazarene 16. Southern Arkansas moves to 6-0 and on the season now. It was Henderson State taking care of business, 56-21 to over Oklahoma Baptist. Henderson State evens their record at 3-3. Three and three. And two games started at 4 o'clock today. Those have become finals as well. Southeast Oklahoma moves to 4-2 and two on the season with a 31-20 victory over Southwest Oklahoma. And Northwest Oklahoma had a 17-7 victory over East Central. So Northwest Oklahoma moves to 2-4 and four on the season, and that will be the Wonder Boys' next opponent next Saturday. UAM leads it 17 to seven here in the team clean broadcast booth. We break for one minute and then come back with the second half. This is Arkansas Tech football.
We move to the third quarter of play at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. Glad that you are with us on River Country, KCJC, and ArkansasTechSports.com. The Wonder Boys golf team earlier this week finished sixth among 17 teams in the Central Region Preview down at Hot Springs Country Club. The Wonder Boys will return to action Monday and Tuesday, scheduled to play in the Midwest Regional at Fox Run in Eureka, Missouri. That's on Monday and Tuesday. And be sure to follow ArkansasTechSports.com for continuing coverage of how head coach Luke Calcaterra and the Wonder Boys fare in that tournament. Also, a big congratulations goes out to head coach Tom Aspel and the Golden Suns cross-country team. Last weekend, they won the Arkansas Tech Invitational and took the top five spots in the individual standings. Aubrey Gilreath won the individual title, and she was named the Great American Conference Women's Cross-Country Runner of the Week. Carson French set to kick it away for Arkansas Tech to begin the third quarter, and he sends a line drive into the waiting arms at the one-yard line of UAM's Trey Fleming. He's out over the 20, the 25, slips by one tackler there and gets out to the 31-yard line, so a 30-yard kickoff return by Trey Fleming of UA Monticello. And the Wonder Boys will take the field defensively with UAM starting first and 10 from its own 31. Bull Weevils in front 17 to 7. But do not fear, as we've discussed, the Wonder Boys faced this exact same 10-point deficit two weeks ago when Southern Nazarene was the opponent. And the Wonder Boys were able to come back and win that one 24 to 10 as they trailed 10 to nothing at halftime on that evening. Made some really good halftime adjustments. Hopefully they did as well tonight. 4-2-5 standard defensive look for Arkansas Tech. Quarterback Cole Sears for UA Monticello fakes a handoff, wants to throw across the middle, does so. It is caught in Arkansas Tech territory by Malcolm Statton. Stays on his feet inside the 30-yard line and tackled at the Arkansas Tech 29. It is a gain on the play of 40 yards and a first down for UA Monticello at the Arkansas Tech 29 as Malcolm Staten able to get free across the middle and UAM with a lightning bolt to begin the third quarter. Oh, that wasn't a good start. Sears will again work from the shotgun, two receivers to his left and one to his right. The one to his right is the man who just made the catch for 40 yards, Staten. He goes in motion, they hand it to him. Staten's gonna try to get around left end with Riley in front to block, and he makes it down to the 20 yard line. Diving tackle from behind, made for Arkansas Tech by George Brooks. And he's able to get Staten to the turf at the 20-yard line. It's a gain of nine and second down and one for the Bull Weevils. The last time that UAM came to Russellville and won a football game over Arkansas Tech was all the way back on October 13th of 2001. That was a 20-19 Bull Weevils victory on that day. Second down and one here for Sears. He hands it off to Imani Riley. Riley goes up the middle, inside the 15, and down to the 12-yard line, a gain of eight on second down and one. And it will be a first down Bull Weevils, first down and 10 at the Arkansas Tech 12-yard line with the clock rolling, 13.25 to go in the third quarter. And UAM definitely threatening to add to its 17-7 lead. Sears will work from the shotgun. One receiver left, one to the right. Here comes a man in motion. Sears hands it off on a little shovel pass, running straight ahead with it for UAM, now bouncing it to the outside, DeAndre Washington, and Washington will be stopped by Jared Loftus at the six-yard line as they ran a little misdirection there with Washington, and he was able to pick up six yards to bring up second down and four for the Bull Weevils at the Arkansas Tech Six. UAM now over 200 yards of total offense on the night. They've got an edge of 212 yards to 159. Sears on second down and four. Fakes a handoff, throws into the end zone. It is broken up. Pass broken up for Arkansas Tech by DJ Williams. The intended receiver was Malcolm Staten. And the incompletion makes it third down and four and how valuable it might be if the Wonder Boys could hold UA Monticello to a field goal try here rather than a touchdown. The Bull Weevils make some changes in personnel. They get their tight end out of the game 
and Ralph Singleton, who has been a fairly dangerous man for UAM tonight with three catches for 36 yards, checks in in the slot to the right side of the formation into the wide side of the field. It's third down and four from the Arkansas Tech six. UAM's Cole Sears has the snap, has time, throws into the end zone, incomplete, penalty flag is thrown, pass interference against Arkansas Tech, and an automatic first down and goal situation for the Bull Weevils with 12-21 to go in the third quarter. Oh, shot ourselves in the foot again there. A lot of times, though, you see no flag on a play like that. He just kind of came over and knocked the ball away. But he must have had the other arm wrapped around him. Well, it just feels every now and then like those pass interference calls on third down have a disproportionate effect on the outcome oh, of these games. It does. Cole, it's a momentum changer. Cole Sears will work first down and goal from the two-yard line. Staten is the receiver right. It's a quarterback draw, and Cole Sears will have a clear path into the end zone for a two-yard touchdown run. Cole Sears with his team-leading sixth rushing touchdown of the season as he uses that big frame of his at six foot three and 220 pounds to cruise into the end zone, and it is now 23-7 to seven bowl weevils pending the outcome of the extra point, which will be attempted by Josh Marini. Marini has been successful on two extra point tries tonight, bringing his total on the season on extra point tries up to a total of seven out of seven. This one is also good, and our new score with 12 minutes and 15 seconds left in the third quarter is UA Monticello 24, Arkansas Tech 7. Here in the Team Clean Broadcast booth, we pause for one minute. This is Wonder Boys Football. Twelve minutes and fifteen seconds to go in the third quarter. UA Monticello twenty-four and Arkansas Tech seven, following a six-play, sixty-nine-yard scoring drive for the Bull Weevils that took two minutes and thirty-eight seconds, and resulted in a two-yard touchdown run by quarterback Cole Sears. And now Josh Marini will kick it back to Arkansas Tech, back deep for the Wonder Boys on the far side of the field. It is Jant Weary. And on the near side, it's Isaac Disney. The kick is away. An end over ender that sends Weary two yards deep into the end zone, and he takes a knee. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Wonder Boys from their own 25-yard line following the touchback. And now the Wonder Boys, who have only attempted six forward passes tonight, trail by 17 points with 12 minutes and 15 seconds to go, and Kelly, by no stretch of the imagination, is it time to abandon the running game, but the Wonder Boys, if they're going to overcome what is now a 17-point deficit, they're probably at some point going to have to exhibit some proficiency in the well, passing game. I would say we need to get some sort of score on this drive right here so we can plan our strategy for the rest of the remainder of the game on what we need to do. Hand off to Brian Allen. Allen will try between the tackles and will be stopped at the 28-yard line for a gain of three. Gabe Brace in on that stop for UA Monticello, along with his teammate Easton Seidel. Seidel is a sophomore defensive lineman from Cabot. Second down and seven, Arkansas Tech from its own 28. Bircham hands to Allen on the option, and Allen goes around right end out to the 32-yard line for a pickup of four. 
That'll make it third down and three. Arkansas Tech is two out of eight on third down conversion so far tonight. Here comes the short yardage package as Carter Bertram checks out and Tanner Gaines will take the snap here on third down and three. He needs to get to his own 35-yard line to pick up the first down. Also checking in up front as an extra blocker is Larry Clark. Man in motion. Gaines takes the snap, goes straight ahead, and will be stopped well short of the yard to gain. Stopped for no gain is Tanner Gaines. And on fourth down and three, the Wonder Boys will have to punt it away after going three and out. So a disappointing drive there for Arkansas Tech. And the line of scrimmage will be the Wonder Boys 32 as Tyler Dunlop checks in to punt it away. Dunlop has punted four times tonight for an average of 43.5 yards per try. Trey Fleming waits at his own 26-yard line. Here with 10 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. Bit of a high snap, but Dunlop fields it, gets the punt away. It's another good one. Angling away from Fleming, it lands at the 30, bounces high in the air, and is downed at the 31-yard line by Jant Weary of Arkansas Tech. It is a 37-yard punt by Tyler Dunlop. And UA Monticello will start from its own 31, 10 32 to go third quarter. And the Bowl Weevils lead is 24 to 7. And it looks like we may have time out on the field, and we do here in the Team Clean Broadcast booth. Let's take a one minute break with them. This is Arkansas Tech football. Ten minutes and 32 seconds to go in the third quarter. UA Monticello with the football and a 24-7 lead over Arkansas Tech. Cole Sears fakes the handoff, throws across the middle. It is dropped at the 44-yard line. Would have been enough for a first down, but unable to haul it in for UA Monticello was DeAndre Washington in Washington's defense. The pass was a little bit behind him. It wasn't right on target, but uh, certainly catchable. The concerning thing is he was wide open. Yes, he was. And it'll be second down and 10 since he dropped it. Line of scrimmage remains the Bull Weevils 31. They've definitely found a little soft spot there, about 15, 20 yards downfield right in the middle of the field that they are attacking with some regularity now. Handoff on the first carry of the night by Logan Penn. Penn goes around left end and carries the football up to the 36-yard line, a pickup of five on second down. We'll make it third and five. In on that stop for Arkansas Tech was Chris Kale. It is third and five, UA Monticello from its own 36. The Bull Weevils so far tonight are one out of seven on third down conversion tries. Made a big stop here. Under 10 minutes to go in the third quarter as the Bull Weevils come to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers right, one to the left for quarterback Cole Sears. They need to get to their own 41. Handoff, run up the middle, and that won't be nearly enough for the first down, a gain of just one. Good job, defense. First carry of the night for Alex Day, not to be confused with Juan Day, who has been a frequent ball carrier here tonight for the Bull Weevils. And George Brooks and K.J. Reed helped make that stop for the Wonder Boys and force UAM into a punting situation on fourth down and four from its own 37-yard line, and it will be Josh Marini to punt it away for the Bull Weevils. Marini putting for the third time tonight. His first two punts have averaged just 24.5 yards per try. I'm not really sure why Cole Sears was removed from the punting chore, but now I do because Marini gets away a beauty this time, lands inside the 15, takes a left turn, and I think it went out of bounds at the one. Oh, my goodness, it did. 
What a punt by Josh Marini of 62 yards. It would be humanly impossible to have a better punt than that one. And the Wonder Boys will have to start from their own one-yard line. And right now, everything is going their way. That is for sure. And so the Wonder Boys will have to go 99 yards here on this drive in order to get a touchdown. Carter Burcham is the quarterback. Brian Allen will be the running back lined up in a pistol formation behind him. Burcham standing on the E and Tech in the end zone as he hands it off to Brian Allen, and Allen fortunate to get out of the end zone. Stopped at the one-yard line for no gain. Initial contact made for the Bull Weevils defensively by Kelvin Brown. No gain makes it second down and 10 for the Wonder Boys from their own one. Burcham this time in a shotgun with Brian Allen lined up to his left. He wants to throw. Burcham with some time. Uh, he gives it deep down the near boundary looking for Glasper, and we're going to have pass interference against UA Monticello. <laughs> Defensive back Dion Knox was running step for step with Tramel Glasper and took him down for a pass interference call that will allow the Wonder Boys to escape the shadow of their own goalposts. It'll be interesting to see if they call it a hold or pass interference. He had a hold of him pretty good, but no, pass interference. Give him a first down. That'll move the football all the way out to the Arkansas Tech 16-yard line from the one. It is an Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down. A little bit of breathing room. Arkansas Tech with 166 yards of total offense tonight. 17 passing yards, 149 rushing yards. On first and 10 from their own 16, Burcham with the snap. Burcham throws across the middle, too far in front of Therese Hampton, and the Wonder Boys are fortunate that Hampton did not tip that up in the air any more than he did. If he'd put just a little bit more air under that deflection, then Christian Jefferson would have surely intercepted it. Yes, there was another white jersey in the area. Easily could have uh, made the interception. The Carter was uh, rushed pretty hard, so he had to go ahead and get rid of it. The incompletion makes it second down and 10. Wonder Boys from their own 16. Handoff to Brian Allen. He tries the middle, and there's just not much there. UAM all night long has really been stacking it up inside the box, committing a lot of people to stop the run. Despite that, Brian Allen has been able to carry the football tonight 16 times for right at 100 yards. They stop him there for a gain of one. And it is third down and nine Wonder Boys from their own 17. Burcham on third down, sets up a middle screen, complete for Allen. Allen's got some running room to the 20, 25-30, first down and more, 35-40. Brian Allen near midfield, and he'll be taken down there at the Arkansas Tech 49. It is a gain of 32 on third down and nine. The Wonder Boys have their third, third down conversion of the game, and it is an Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down with 7.41 to play in the third quarter. A little sense of urgency here. Another play real fast. Burcham throws, deflected, and intercepted. Picked off over on the far side of the field, reading that one and jumping the route to pick it off for the Bull Weevils and collecting what I believe is his second interception of the night, if I've got the ID correct on it, as they carry, literally carry the man who made the interception off the field. And it was indeed... Jamel London, the same man who had that 70-yard interception return for a touchdown in the second quarter. This time he jumps the route, dives in front of the intended receiver, and intercepts the pass at the 50-yard line to get the football back for UA Monticello. And my, oh my, those turnovers, the third of the game for Arkansas Tech compared to zero for UA Monticello. And that's a tough way to win a football game. Oh, it doesn't help you. Cole Sears from the shotgun. Fakes the handoff. Here comes the pressure. Sears throws, and it is caught in Arkansas Tech territory at the 44-yard line, a gain of six on first down. And it, it'll be second and four for the Weevils from the Tech 44. Sears now 14 of 27 passing for 100 yards. That catch made by Sylvester Augustine. It is Augustine's third catch of the night. Second down and four as Sears awaits the snap. Man in motion, Ralph Singleton. They give it to him on the jet sweep. Singleton tries to get around left end, but he is tripped up short of the yard to gain. A open field tackle made by Arkansas Tech defensive lineman. 
Hayden Knowles. Knowles is a freshman from Bryant. And he makes the stop at the 42-yard line to force UAM into a third down and two following a gain of two by Ralph Singleton. Singleton's second carry of the night. Now it's third down and two. Line of scrimmage is the Arkansas Tech 42. Sears awaits the snap, has it. Quarterback draw straight ahead, follows a blocker to the 40-yard line. And if he gets a very good spot, it should be enough for a UA Monticello first down. It's going to be close. It's going to be real close as the line judge comes in from the near sideline. This may even require a measurement. We'll see what the referee says. It is right at the yard to gain, and he is indeed going to bring the chains out, which you don't see very often before, but we'll see it here with five minutes and 58 seconds to go in the third quarter. It is either at the 41-yard line or it's at the 40 officially in Arkansas Tech territory, so this is not quite as critical as some measurements because I, I figure even if they're short, they're very likely to go for it on fourth and what would be only inches. Well, the way that they've been uh, able to run the ball tonight and throw the ball, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they went for it. Here they stretch the chains, and it is. They eyeball it real close, still looking, still looking. That's how close it is. The referee wants to have make sure those chains are stretched all the way out the full 10 yards. Now he's down looking at it. May have to get out the old index card. And he says he holds up two fingers to say it is fourth that down. close. It is fourth down. About an inch. Yeah, you normally say fourth and in inches. I mean, yeah, I think you may be I, right. I'd I say an inch. Maybe singular. So the chain gang they returns to the far sideline. Veteran the, chain gang. The Bull Weevils will go for it on fourth down. They're 0 for 1 on fourth down conversion tries tonight. And overall this season, they're 7 out of 19. See if we can go 0 for 2. Fourth down and maybe an inch. Sears hands it off. And it'll be enough for a Bull Weevil first down up to the 39-yard line. I think the ball came out possibly, but UAM was able to recover it. The referee indicates first down UAM. Second effort. As Alex Day able to carry it to the 39-yard line. Officially, it'll be, well, they put it closer to the 40. So let's call it a gain of one on fourth down and one. Needed an inch and got about half a foot. Yep. Had a little bit of room to spare, but not much. And the clock goes down under five and a half minutes. And with UAM leading 24-7, to seven, as much as anything, what that does is it allows the bull weevils to take some more time off of this clock. Handoff again to Alex Day. He runs left inside the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. A penalty flag comes out the end of the play. Looks like a UAM player a little upset. Now a little extra pushing and shoving, but luckily the upset UAM player is being pulled away by one of his more level-headed teammates. Yeah, he'll come out for a play and visit with the coach. The play went for a gain of about seven, but... That'll come back. They'll lose that. I believe it was a dead ball. Yes. So that'll they'll keep that yardage and lose some. The official still talking it over. We have five minutes and ten seconds to play in the third quarter. UA Monticello 24, Arkansas Tech 7 is our score. While they sort this out, let's pause ten seconds for station ID. This is Wonder Boys football. So they have called offsetting unsportsmanlike penalties against both teams, and so basically it's as if it didn't happen. Even though it was clearly the UAM player that was doing most of the pushing and shoving. but It's a gain of six as the play stands with no penalty enforced, and it'll be second down and four for the Bull Weevils at the Arkansas Tech 34-yard line, down to five minutes left in the third quarter. Weevils in front. 24 to 7 trying to win in Russellville for the first time in 17 years. Handoff. It's a jet sweep trying to get around left end, but now reversing field. It's Jeremy Hampton, and he's got running room to the 20, the 15, the 10, and with a burst of speed, he takes it all the way to the end zone on a play that was designed to go around left end. The Wonder Boys had it defended expertly that direction, but no backside contain, and when Jeremy Hampton reversed field and sliced through the point of attack, it was clear sailing to the end zone, and a touchdown run for UA Monticello that has given them a 30-7 to lead with four minutes and 48 seconds left on a 34-yard run by Jeremy Hampton. 
It will be Josh Marini to attempt the extra point. Here late in the third quarter and things not looking good for the Wonder Boys. The scoring drive for UAM, six plays, 50 yards. It took two minutes and 44 seconds. And now Marini will attempt the extra point. The kick is away. It is good. And our new score at the 448 mark of the third quarter is UAM 31, Arkansas Tech 7. At the Team Clean Broadcast booth, we step aside for 30 seconds. This is Arkansas Tech football. Four minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter and UA Monticello, which has come to Russellville and won just that one time in 2001 since 1991. So one road win for the Bull Weevils over Arkansas Tech in the last 27 years. And right now UAM enjoys a 31 to seven lead over Arkansas Tech with still 448 to go in the third quarter and the time remaining is about the only good news that I have at the moment. Marini's kick is away. It is fielded by Jant Weary at the three-yard line. He's out over the 10, the 15, 20. Penalty flag is thrown. That'll be a block in the back against Arkansas Tech. And it will be a mark off half the distance to the goal from where the penalty flag was thrown, which is about the 16-yard line. And the Wonder Boys are going to have to start from their own eight-yard line as the hits just keep on coming. Yeah, that block in the back was easy to see, easy to call. But hard to swallow. Very hard to swallow. This whole, this whole evening has been hard to swallow so far. Four minutes and 44 seconds to play in the third quarter. UA Monticello with 270 yards of total offense. Arkansas Tech with 199. But really the only number that has made a big difference here tonight has been turnovers and points off turnovers. The Wonder Boys have committed three turnovers and UAM has converted that to 14 points. And the Bull Weevils have yet to commit a turnover. On first down and 10 from their own eight, a change at quarterback for Arkansas Tech. Manny Harris making his Arkansas Tech debut, and he hands it off to Brian Allen on first down. Allen carries the football out to the 12-yard line. A gain of four makes it second down and six. Manny Harris is from Copperas Cove, Texas. He originally signed with the University of Texas at San Antonio and is a transfer to Arkansas Tech. He's a sophomore. Hand off to Allen. Allen goes up the middle. Out to the 17-yard line for a gain of five. Looked like they might have tackled him up about the head. Yeah, his, his head spun just a little bit. They gave him a bonus yard up to the 18, and that'll be enough for an Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down. Harris has two receivers to his right and one to his left. Penalty flag thrown at the snap of the football. Hand off to Brian Allen, and he'll be dropped for a loss on the off chance that the play stands. False start. Tackle made for UA Monticello by Brandon Young. Going to decline the penalty. And with three minutes and 59 seconds left in the third quarter, they will accept the outcome of the play, which is a loss of two back to the 16-yard line. And from there, it'll be second down and 12. Manny Harris making his debut at quarterback for the Wonder Boys, trying to spark an Arkansas Tech offense that has been limited to 208 yards so far here tonight. Harris gives to Allen, Allen up the middle, and Marshad Melancon has the tackle on him up at the 22-yard line, a gain of six, and it'll be third down and six for Arkansas Tech. The Wonder Boys, three out of 10 on third down conversion tries here tonight, and we may very well see the first career pass attempt now from Manny Harris. Harris wears number 12 for Arkansas Tech. He is six foot, 218 pounds. Spent last year at Cisco College, a junior college in Texas. On third and six, he throws across the middle. It is caught, but it'll be short of the yard to gain. Tackle made by Christian Jefferson of UA Monticello after Drew Wade made the reception for the Wonder Boys. And there is an injured Arkansas Tech player on the play. It appears to be one of the Wonder Boys' offensive linemen, and they will have to come out and tend to him while they do 
We will step aside for a one-minute break. 3.01 to go third quarter. UAM leads 31-7, and this is Arkansas Tech football. The injured wonder boy is Damon Nelson, and he will be able to leave the field under his own power, but looks to be favoring his left arm as he will receive attention from Duke Walden, the head athletic trainer at Arkansas Tech University, as Tyler Dunlop gets set to punt it back to the Bull Weevils with three minutes to go, and UAM firmly in control of this game at 31-7. to Dunlop's punt is away. Good punt. High wobbly spiral, fair catch is called for and made by Trey Fleming at his own 26-yard line. And so it is a 49-yard punt by Tyler Dunlop, matching his longest punt of the night. And it'll be first and 10 bull weevils from their own 26 with 2 minutes and 47 seconds to go. And UAM leading 31-7. to Update on... Brian Allen's numbers. He now has 21 carries for 116 yards tonight and the one touchdown. With 116 yards tonight, Allen is now 151 yards away from surpassing Eddie Metter for second place on the career rushing list at Arkansas Tech. And he is 344 yards away from surpassing the Mariana Mahler, Larry Brown, for the school record. Larry rushed for 3,603 yards at Arkansas Tech from 1968 through 71. Cole Sears rolls right, throws to Ralph Singleton. He makes the catch and gets a foot down inbounds, making it a completed pass at the 35-yard line for a gain of eight. And it'll be second down and two as Kelly brings us a score update from Searcy. Well, it's been a tight one, and uh, the Washita Baptist Tigers have just scored 922 left in that game. And they now have a 7-3 to three lead over the 19th-ranked Harding Bisons. Like I said, 9-22 left in that game. Washita just scored 7-3. to three. Shunsey Thomas with the 19-yard touchdown run to put the Tigers in front. Cole Sears hands it off on second down and two, and the Wonder Boys defense has it stopped for no gain. Harrison Lester among the Wonder Boys getting up off the pile, along with K.J. Reed. Gary Burton also in on that stop as ball carrier Alex Day found no running room. And now he will check out, replaced by Logan Penn. No gain on second down, makes it third down and two for UA Monticello. Line of scrimmage is the Bull Weevil 35. UA Monticello, one out of nine on third down conversion tries tonight. Looked like Penn might have got a head start. Sears throws it deep, has a man down the far boundary. The catch is made out of bounds with UA Monticello first down in Arkansas Tech territory. It is DeAndre Washington. Washington makes his second reception of the night. It is a gain to the Arkansas Tech 25-yard line, a pickup of 40 yards on third down and two. And the UAM Bull Weevils with a chance to add to their 31-7 lead here in the final moments of the third quarter. That was a beautiful it pass was, and catch. You have to give them credit. Beautiful pass and catch. I'm not sure it could have been defended any better. Sears hands it off, trying to get around right end, and now doing so is Alex Day. He is stacked up at the Arkansas Tech 23-yard line following a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight for the Bull Weevils. Chris Kale 
leading that surge defensively for Arkansas Tech. Cornelius Dorch has checked in in the secondary for the Wonder Boys, another Arkansas Tech regular who missed the first part of the season due to injury. Down to 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Sears on second down. Brings a man in motion. Hands it to that man. It's a double reverse pass. At least a pass option for the man who took the second handoff. That is Trey Fleming. He had nothing open, perfectly defended by the Wonder Boys. And Fleming had no choice but to step out of bounds with it for a loss back to the 27-yard line. Loss of five on the play. And it'll be third down and 12 for UA Monticello. Might have been one of their first bad play calls tonight. And it was the final play call of the third quarter. 15 minutes remaining at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field tonight. And so far tonight, there has certainly been nothing more evil than a bull weevil. They lead it 31-7. to We will step up for 30 seconds here in the Team Clean Broadcast booth. This is Arkansas Tech football. We head to the final 15 minutes with UA Monticello leading Arkansas Tech by a score of 31 to seven. And the football in the possession of the Bull Weevils as we begin the fourth quarter, they face third down and 12 at the Arkansas Tech 27 yard line. Qu quarterback Cole Sears of UAM has completed 16 of 29 passes tonight for 212 yards, Jeremy Hampton has scored two touchdowns for the Weevils. Jamel London has intercepted two passes. Third down and 12. Cole Sears has the snap, throws across the middle, catch is made at the 20 yard line. Fighting for that first down marker is Curtis Anderson and he will be stopped short of it at the 17 yard line. A pickup of 10 on third down and 12. It is fourth down and two for UA Monticello. And here comes the field goal unit for the Bull Weevils. Line of scrimmage is the Arkansas Tech 17. We'll see where they set up Terry Bozeman to be the holder on this field goal try. It looks like Marini wants to put him at the 24-yard line, making this a 34-yard try from the left hash mark. Bozeman asking him where he wants it. He says right there, it'll be a 34-yard try from the left hash mark, kicking toward the north goal and the hole building. The kick is away. It is plenty long. It is good, and our new score with 14 minutes and 12 seconds left in the fourth quarter is UA Monticello 34 and Arkansas Tech 7. In the Team Clean broadcast booth, we pause for one minute. This is Wonder Boys football. The scoring drive for UA Monticello was seven plays, 56 yards. It took three minutes and 35 seconds and resulted in the 34-yard field goal by Josh Marini. Marini had not made a field goal this season coming into tonight, and tonight he's made two. He connected from 35 yards back in the first quarter. And now this 34-yarder has made it 34-7. to UA Monticello with 14 minutes and 12 seconds remaining, and... Kelly, we discussed earlier that there was still enough time left. It wasn't time to abandon the running game yet and go exclusively to the pass. It may be now time to go exclusively to the pass. I think you better make the switch right now. Start passing that ball. Take your chances. You got to uh, save some time, conserve some time on your drives now. Plus, you got to hold, hold on defense and get the ball back. 
It'll be Josh Marini to kick it away for the Bull Weevils. Sends a high end over ender to the three yard line, fielded by Jant Weary. Weary out over the 15, up to the 20, looking for running room, but there is none there. Taken down by Dion Knox at the 20 yard line. And it'll be first down and 10, Arkansas Tech from there. And we'll see who comes in at quarterback for the Wonder Boys. Manny Harris worked the last possession. Carter Burcham has taken off his helmet and is wearing a ball cap, so it's not going to be him. It will indeed be Manny Harris who will give it a go again. He completed his only pass attempt in his first possession, but it only went for three yards and was stopped short of the yard to gain on third down. He'll work from the shotgun, two receivers to his left, one to his right, throws to his right, and it is off target, trying to find Chris Eastburn out of the backfield. And the incompletion will make it second down and 10 Wonder Boys from their own 20. UA Monticello jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead in this ball game. The Wonder Boys answered with a 41 yard touchdown run by Brian Allen with 9.57 to go in the second quarter. It looked at that moment like the Wonder Boys might be able to restore order, but since then, UAM has scored 24 unanswered. Harris throws deep for Hampton. Hampton makes the catch at midfield and he is ridden out of bounds in UA Monticello territory. They will spot him out at the 41. The gain on the play is 39 yards. It is an Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down, the 10th of the night. And the Wonder Boys have it in Weevil territory. There is an injured UA Monticello player. And while they tend to him, here in the Team Clean broadcast booth, we will pause for one minute. You're listening to the Wonder Boys. Manny Harris on first and 10 from the UAM 41 throws wide of his intended target, Tramel Glasper, at the 30-yard line. The incomplete pass stops the clock with 13 minutes and 43 seconds to go. UAM leading 34-7. The bull weevil who was shaken up on the previous play was Dion Knox, and he was able to leave the field under his own power. Second down and 10 for Arkansas Tech at the UAM 41. Manny Harris on in relief of Carter Burcham, takes the snap, lobs it deep down the sideline for Therese Hampton. Hampton reaches out and makes the grab, and he's tackled inside the 10-yard line. They will say he is down at the 6. The gain on the play is 35, as that connection of Manny Harris to Therese Hampton connects for the second time on this drive and sets the Wonder Boys up inside the 10-yard line. The Wonder Boys this year are 10 out of 18 on red zone scoring opportunities. UAM leads the conference in red zone defense. Harris fakes the handoff, runs left, reaches for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown, Arkansas Tech. Manny Harris able to stay on his feet through contact inside the five-yard line and takes it in for the touchdown. And for Arkansas Tech, it's another Phil Wright Autoplex Fireworks Wonder Boys touchdown. Manny Harris on the touchdown keeper. And the Wonder Boys cut into the UAM lead here with 13.21 to go. Good drive that time, and they did not take much time. Carson French will attempt the extra point. Placement is down. Kick is away. It is good. And our new score with 13 minutes and 21 seconds to go is UAM 34, Arkansas Tech 14, and Hope Lives at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field in Russellville. Here in the Team Clean broadcast booth, we will step aside for one minute. You're listening to the Wonder Boys.
we'd like to make a shout out and salute to Frank Fleming. Frank Fleming last night at Russellville High School was on the team game for his 500th game. So tonight, Frank Fleming is here tonight on the Arkansas Tech game game. This is number 501. Game Craig Fleming has volunteered for the chain gang. Let's give him a big round of applause. Craig Fleming. Thirteen minutes and twenty-one seconds to go. The scoring drive for Arkansas Tech. Five plays, eighty yards. It took just forty-five seconds. Two big pass plays from Manny Harris to Therese Hampton, setting the table, and then Harris cashing it in with the six-yard touchdown run. And the UAM lead is cut to thirty-four to fourteen with thirteen twenty-one to go. UAM not discounting the fact the Wonder Boys could go with an onside kick here. It feels a little bit early for that just yet, but the Bull Weevils are ready just in case. Well, I'll tell you what, just a little pooch kick to about the 30-yard line, get down there and recover it. That might be pretty effective right here. Because their back man is standing on the goal line. Yeah, there's more than 40 yards between the up men and then the one lone return man back for the Bull Weevils. There's a lot of green turf out there between them. Carson French will indeed pooch They're it over those try. 10 men up front. It lands at the 35-yard line and able to go back and down it for UAM is Jalon Watts, a senior linebacker, diving on the football at about the 27-yard line, and that's where UAM will go on offense with 13 minutes and 16 seconds to go. UAM leading 34-14, to 14, and Kelly, the, the natural feeling here, if you're the offensive coordinator for UA Monticello, and it happens to be Arkansas Tech alumnus Kyle Shipp, the natural feeling here is to kind of close it up, run yep. that football, run that clock. Be conservative here. But, but it's being aggressive that has gotten the Bull Weevils to this point, so it'll be very interesting to see how they play it. Now all we need is three more drives like that last one, and we can, we can walk away with a win. I tell you what, if they're only going to take 45 seconds, it, it's still in the hat for sure. Cole Sears. Hands it off. Amani Riley runs between the tackles up to the 29-yard line, a pickup of two. Good stop. It'll be second down and eight after the tackle by Quay Rose and K.J. Reed along with, for Arkansas Tech, it was Hunter Hudson, the third man there. Gain on the play was two. It'll be second down and eight for U.A. Monticello. Line of scrimmage is there, 29. Clock rolling, 12.52 to go. Cole Sears from the shotgun. Amani Riley lined up to his left. Two receivers left, one to the right. Sears fakes the handoff, throws short and complete to DeAndre Washington. Washington is stacked up and stopped for no gain. Stop made for Arkansas Tech by Gary Burton, along with Chris Kale and K.J. Reed. They stop Washington for no gain. It's third down and eight. And U.A. Monticello is just two out of 11 on third down conversion tries tonight. Boy, you got to say it, big third down right here. No doubt about it. Yeah, down, you know, about three scores, and with 12 minutes to go, the Wonder Boys defense really needs to string together some three and outs. A chance to get one right here. Sears has the snap, sets up a screen. It is complete to Alex Day, and he is stopped for a loss. Tackle made for Arkansas Tech University by D.O. Williams. Back at the 28-yard line for a loss of one. It is fourth down and nine. And the Bowl Weevils must punt it away with 11.49 to play, and they am in the lead. It's 34-14 UA Monticello, but for the first time tonight, really, momentum is in the corner of Arkansas Tech. What, let's get it back here and have another 35 to 40 second drive. Josh, Marini, three and out. Josh Marini's last punt traveled 62 yards. The snap's oh. over his head. The snap's over his head. It'll go through the back of the end zone for a safety, and Arkansas Tech will get the football plus two points. Just that'll what you need. That'll cut the UAM lead to 34-16 to with 11.23 to go, and a break there for the Wonder Boys. Now UAM will have to free kick it from the 20-yard line, and they will do so when we come back to the Team Clean broadcast booth in 30 seconds. This is Arkansas Tech football.
11 minutes and 23 seconds to go. UA Monticello 34 and Arkansas Tech now 16 following the safety on the bad snap on the punt attempt. Well, you should get good field position here. Even with a 60-yard punt, you should get a good return. Out punt your coverage is what we want to do. Jant Weary and Isaac Disney. Wait. Or shank it. That'd be fine. Wait for Arkansas Tech at the Wonder Boys 26-yard line. And Josh Marini will elect to punt it here on the free kick with 11.23 remaining. The free kick is away. Not a very good punt. You called it, Kelly. It is indeed a shank. And the fair catch is called for and made. I know he didn't call for a fair catch. I think he might have been trying to go for the old fake fair catch there, Jared Loftus. Now he's saying he did make a fair catch, but the officials didn't give it to him. And regardless, UAM tackles him right there at the 46 of Arkansas Tech. And that's where the Wonder Boys will go on offense as the free kick only traveled 34 yards. And Jared Loftus, a defensive lineman, <laughs> showing some graceful hands to be able to field that one. Well, even if he didn't fair catch it, he, he sure had everybody fooled except the one player for UAM who said, I've seen this before. i go ahead and tackle him. And he did. 11 minutes and 16 seconds left. Arkansas Tech with the football and hope. 34 to 16 is the UAM lead. Manny Harris, the quarterback. Harris takes the snap, has some time, throws toward the far side. It is wide of his target, Brian Allen. And it'll be second down and 10, Arkansas Tech. Harris now three of six passing for 77 yards since coming on in relief of Carter Burcham. Chris Eastburn checks in for the Wonder Boys, replacing wide receiver Trey Smith. Little extra blocking up front there, trying to give Manny Harris some more time to get rid of that football. The receivers to the near side of the field are Tramel Glasper and Drew Wade. Harris has time, throws across the middle, catch is not made. A diving attempt by Tramel Glasper inside the UA Monticello 40 would have been enough for a first down, but could not collect it. And now it'll be third down and 10 Wonder Boys from their own 46. Stops the clock with 11 minutes and four seconds to go. UA Monticello 34, Arkansas Tech 16 is our score. The Wonder Boys have scored the last nine points in the game to make this one interesting. Manny Harris has receivers and one to his left. Third down and 10 from his own 46. Well, for sure, get the 10 yards. Hampton is that receiver to the left. Harris looking that way, throws for Hampton. And he tries to go for the back shoulder, but Hampton cannot quite haul it in. It falls incomplete, and the Wonder Boys will send out the punt team with 10.59 to go. Line of scrimmage is the Arkansas Tech 46. One cannot fully discount the possibility of a fake punt here, but 10 yards is a lot to get. It is. And in the meantime, it has gone final. Washita 7, Harding 3. The punt by Dunlop is away. Fair catch is called for and made at the 18-yard line, and so it is a 36-yard punt by Dunlop. And if you will forgive the, the term, I bet that game tonight in Searcy, I bet that was a slobber knocker. Oh, I bet it was. You, uh, very few penalties, uh, 176 yards for Washita, 308 for Harding, but they just could not get on the board, could not get in the end zone touchdown. Field goal was all they were able to, to get. So Washita remains undefeated as well as Southern Arkansas. And it looks like it's going to most likely, it's still a lot of football to be played, but it could very easily come down to that game in El Dorado and I believe the next to last week of the regular season between Washita and Southern Arkansas. Sears to the near side of the field. Loss of yardage there. Reception made by Curtis Anderson, Andrew Craig, and Chris Hill in on the stop for the boys. An awful brave. It's this deep. The completed pass, 10 UA Monticello. The line of scrimmage remains the Bull Weevils 18. 10 minutes and 26 seconds to go. UAM 34, Arkansas Tech 16. Wonder Boys trying to mount an improbable comeback here in the fourth quarter after trailing by as many as 27. On second down and 10, Sears hands it off. Imani Riley on his feet to the 22-yard line, then drags the pile all the way up to the 23. A gain of five on some tough running by Imani Riley. And it'll be third down and five for UA Monticello from its own 23 as we go under 
10 minutes remaining in the clock is clearly not a friend of the Wonder Boys at this point, especially if UAM is able to convert here on third down and five. Need to get the ball back real fast. It'll be down under nine and a half minutes left before Cole Sears has to call for the football here on third down. They need to get to their own 28 to pick up the first down. The line of scrimmage is the 23. K.J. Reed shows a middle blitz. Now Sears has the snap. Sears under pressure, rolling to his left. He'll just slide down with it, taking a loss to, a smart play. to prevent any chance of a turnover. Wonder Boys take a timeout, try to conserve that clock. Timeout, Wonder Boys. They will be receiving a punt when we come back. Nine minutes and 20 seconds to go. UAM leads 34-16 to 16 in the Team Clean broadcast booth. We pause for 30 seconds. You're listening to the Wonder Boys. Nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter and UAM lining up in punt formation. The Bull Weevils lead 34 to 16. Remember the last time they attempted a punt, the snap went over the head of Josh Marini and through the back of the end zone for a safety. That is certainly a possibility again here. As Marini awaits the snap, this one is a bit low predictably. The punt is away and no penalty flags there. The punt is fielded at the Arkansas Tech 42-yard line on a fair catch by Tyrus Fort. And it'll be first down and 10, Arkansas Tech. So very good field position here. Wonder Boys from their own 42, nine minutes and 16 seconds left. Two timeouts remaining, down by 18 points. Almost a must that Arkansas Tech get a touchdown this position. Yes, and a very quick one. Manny Harris is the quarterback. Three out of eight for 77 yards since entering the game. Two receivers to his left, Therese Hampton to his right. He looks toward Hampton, throws it to him, catch is made, foot down, inbounds. Should be enough for an Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down. It is at the UA Monticello 47 on a gain of 11. And the Wonder Boys pick up their 12th first down of the game. Manny Harris wants to go quickly from the shotgun. Has the snap. Looking, pocket collapsing, rolling left. He's going to run for it. Penalty flag down the far side of the field. Harris runs to the UAM 39. Dragged down from behind there with a gain of what would have been eight yards. But there is that yellow hanky over on the far side of the field. He was saying illegal substitution, I believe, against Monticello. No foul on the play. The official who threw the flag thought it was an illegal formation, but he was overruled. And so the gain by Manny Harris on the scramble of eight yards stands, and it is second down and two Arkansas Tech at the UA Monticello 39. Eight minutes and 49 seconds to go. Wonder Boys down by 18. Harris turns. Gets feet inside the 35, inside the 30, and all the way down to the 28-yard line goes Brian Allen. On a gain of 11, it is another Arkansas Tech Buffalo Wild Wings first down. And the Wonder Boys have it first and 10 at the UAM 28 with 8.36 to go. UAM led this game at one time 34 to 7. It's now down to 34 to 16. And the Wonder Boys on the move again. Harris fakes a handoff. Lobs it across the middle. It is intercepted. Picked off at the six-yard line. He was looking for Austin McNeely. But instead, he found Christian Jefferson. And the fourth turnover of the game will likely seal the Wonder Boys' fate. Minutes and 13 seconds to go. Jefferson tackled out of bounds on the far side of the field after he returned that interception out to the UAM 32-yard line. And that is now minus four on the turnover margin tonight for Arkansas Tech. And you could probably count on one hand the number of times you've seen a football game where one team was minus four or worse on the turnover margin and was able to celebrate at the evening's end. Harris had the right idea. He's a lob pass. The receiver kind of cut off his route. There was nothing but a white jersey out there. Eight minutes and 13 seconds to go. UAM with the football and a 34 to 16 lead. 
Hand off to Imani Riley. He runs right and taken down on an ankle tackle. Coming up to make the stop for Arkansas Tech, it was Quay Rose. Otherwise, it looked like there was about to be a lot of running room for Imani Riley. There was a lot of green grass over there, or turf in this case. Gain of five makes it second down and five for the Bull Weevils from their own 37, and that clock just keeps on rolling. It'll be down under seven and a half minutes before they have to snap it here on second down and five. Cole Sears awaits the snap. Gives to Imani Riley. Riley goes between the tackles. Geo Williams made the first contact defensively for Arkansas Tech. The gain is one to the 38, and it'll be fourth down, or excuse me, third down, third down and four for UA Monticello. When we come back, the Wonder Boys have called timeout. 7.26 to go. UAM leads 34 to 16. In the Team Clean broadcast booth, we pause for 30 seconds. This is Wonder Boys football. Seven minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The University of Arkansas at Monticello 34 and Arkansas Tech 16. And the Bull Weevils with the football. It is third down and four for UAM from its own 38. Wonder Boys are now down to just one timeout left. Cole Sears, the quarterback, awaits the snap. Two setbacks in front of him. Fakes the pass, runs it straight ahead. Up to the 40, the 41, he'll be stopped there short of the yard to gain. And Arkansas Tech will use its final timeout with 7 minutes and 18 seconds to go. UAM leads 34 to 16. Here in the Team Clean broadcast booth, we pause for 30 seconds. This is Arkansas Tech football. Seven minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. UAM likely about to punt it away, one would imagine, on fourth down and one from their own 41. And they are in control of this one, 34 to 16. As they will, oh, that's Cole Sears. I think they may go for the knockout punch right here. Sears is going to at least line up. Now, he could quick kick it. It's, he's an an excellent punter, so he could drop back here and quick kick it if he can't draw the Wonder Boys off sides on fourth down and one. Brings a man in motion. He's going to go for it. Sears runs straight ahead. He will have the first down, and that should do it. The Wonder Boys are out of timeouts. UAM goes for it on fourth and one from its own 41-yard line. If they don't get that, the game is very much back in the hat, but they do, and as a result, the game is probably over unless the bowl become suddenly prone to turnovers, which is not something they have done all night long. No, they've done a very good job of protecting that ball. A gain of three yards are on fourth down and one. And the clock goes under seven minutes to play. As you mentioned, no so far tonight to the Wonder Boys four. And that has pretty well told the story here tonight. The Wonder Boys have outgained them in total yards. But those four Compared to none for the Weevils, just too much to overcome. Amani Riley gets the carry on first and 10 from the UAM 44. And he takes the football up to the 47-yard line for a gain of three. And of those four turnovers, they were able to score 14 points. 
T.J. McPherson checks back in on the Arkansas Tech defensive line, spelling George Brooks, last week's defensive MVP for the Wonder Boys. It is second down and seven for the Weevils from their own 47. Sears has two receivers to his left, and Riley is his right. On second and seven, Sears takes the snap, hands to Riley. Riley trying to get around left end, upended by Andrew Craig. A penalty flag is thrown, and that will stop the clock momentarily with five minutes and 47 seconds to go. There is an injured UAM player. I think the penalty is going to be holding against UAM. Imani Riley was up after he took a big lick at the end of that play. Not sure if they'll take the penalty, but decline it to put it in third down situation. Riley was stopped. Oh, black in the back. I'm sorry. The penalty is declined. Riley was stopped at the 46-yard line, so Coach Monica wants to accept the outcome of that play, which was a loss of one. It brings up third down and eight for UA Monticello. Wonder Boys are out of timeouts, 5.42 to go. Bull Weevils just milking the time away here, up 34 to 16 over the Wonder Boys, and UA Monticello perhaps preparing to celebrate its first win in Russellville since 2001. Sears hands it off. Running straight ahead is Alex Day, stays on his feet into Arkansas Tech territory down to the 49-yard line. A pickup of five, that'll make it fourth down and three. And surely they would not go for it again, they will not. Josh Marini will come on to try to punt it away and pin the Wonder Boys deep in their own territory with now under five minutes to go and UAM leading 34 to 16. A reminder, we'll be with you next Saturday afternoon from beautiful Al Oklahoma where the Wonder Boys will take on State for a 2 p.m. kickoff. Marini's punt is away. Tyrus Fort calls for and makes the fair catch at his own 23. It is a 26-yard punt. There is a penalty flag down on the far side of the field. If it's against Arkansas Tech, and it happened before the change of possession, it would be enough for a UAM first down. Oh, goodness, it is. Offsides. Offsides against Arkansas Tech, and that will give UAM a free first down that will remove any shred of doubt that was remaining as to the outcome of this game. Yard line. And M can just almost get into victory formation with the Wonder Boys having already exhausted their supply of timeout. They have put their back Caleb Kennedy into the game. Cole Sears will finish the night 20 for 220 yards and a touchdown. Kennedy takes the snap, hands it off, and straight ahead running between the tackles down to the 40-yard line. A gain of four. I imagine we have at least a few... UAM fans tuned in on the video stream and to all of you we say congratulations to your young men as they came here to Russellville tonight with a good game plan and they executed it very well. This has been a lot more about what UAM has done well than what Arkansas Tech has done poorly here tonight. This has been an outstanding all around performance by the Bull Weevils. Well you look at their schedule, they've they've been in, in most of their games. They've been close scores for the most part. Kennedy on second down and six, hands it off. Running left is Alex Day. And he is forced out of bounds with enough for a UAM first down at the 32-yard line. It's a gain of eight on second down and six. We're down to three minutes and 49 seconds left. Next home game for the Wonder Boys will be in two weeks. It'll be homecoming at Arkansas Tech University on Saturday, October 20th. A 2 p.m. game against Southwestern Oklahoma State, but of course, so many other events taking place that weekend. We invite you to go to atualumni.com and register for all the homecoming events. Hand off to Alex Day. Looking at UAM's schedule, they now they have Southern Nazarene and Oklahoma Baptist the next two weeks. So 
Things may be looking up for them as far as the one loss schedule. Absolutely. They will have a pretty good chance, you'd have to say. No, no offense to our friends in Bethany or in Shawnee, but you'd have to say they're going to have a pretty good chance. They came into tonight one and four. And they're going to have a pretty good chance here in a couple of weeks to be 4-4. Four and four. And as they look for their first winning season since 2008. And if they play like they did here tonight in Russellville, I like their chances. Oh, I tell you what. Protect the ball like they did. Gain of two on that last play. It's second down and eight at the Arkansas Tech 30. This will be just the second time since 1991 that UAM has defeated Arkansas Tech in Russellville. Their most recent win before tonight was in 2001, a 20 to 19 victory that helped deny the Wonder Boys an NCAA Division II postseason playoffs berth in that 2001 season. Loss of one on the last play. It's third and nine now. Second, there are two minutes and 12 seconds left in the game. Caleb Kennedy awaits the snap. Man in motion. They hand it off to that man, Jeremy Hampton, who scored two touchdowns here tonight, and he'll be dropped for a loss by Alex Chambers. Back to the 32-yard line. Clock rolling with under two minutes to play. They'll go for it here. Nothing to lose. Yeah, too far out for a field goal. Too close to punt it. It'll be fourth down and 12. Head coach Hud Jackson allowing that clock to drain away before he sends his offense back out. Play clock's down to 10. They've got three timeouts if they need one. Ahead of this fourth down and 12 play. Play clock at three. They may need one. Kennedy uses it. One minute and 14 seconds left. UAM leads 34 to 16. We will pause for 30 seconds here in the Team Clean broadcast booth. This is Arkansas Tech football. One minute and 14 seconds left. UA Monticello, 34. Arkansas Tech, 16. With the loss, the Wonder Boys fall to 2-4. and four. UAM will improve to 2-4 and four with their win. Fourth down and 12. Looks to the far side. They're going to change the play with 17 on the play clock. Two receivers left, one to the right. Kennedy fakes a handoff, throws it deep toward the end zone, and it is caught at the one-yard line for a gain of 33 yards, and it'll be first down and goal for the Bull Weevils at the one-yard line with one minute and six seconds left, and I... Let's put a little salt in the wound, why don't we? Well, I'd, I'd be, I'll be surprised if they don't just take a knee here with 106 left. But it's been 17 years since they've won a game here. None of these coaches have won a game here. I wouldn't blame them if they punched it in or they tried to punch it in either. But it looks like they will get into victory formation, which is what I would anticipate from, from the UAM coaching staff. Good sport. Can go under center. He will take a knee. If he times it just right, he might only have to do it once. Looks like he probably will have to do it two times, though. He will, as there's, unless they are a little slow resetting that play clock, and thankfully they are. Yeah. And that will be the last play of the game. That's it. Well, there's a lot of excited people in Kelly Green across the way right now, and rightfully so. These young men were in diapers, a lot of them last time UA Monticello won a football game in Russellville. But tonight... They will make the drive back home to southeast Arkansas with smiles on their faces as the University of Arkansas at Monticello has defeated Arkansas Tech tonight at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field by a final score of 34 to 16. Here in the Team Clean broadcast booth, we will pause for one minute and then come back to wrap it up. Wonder Boys lose. This is Arkansas Tech football.
Arkansas Tech Athletics. Have a great weekend as Clinton drives Texas on the way home. And go Tech! Don't forget to join us two weeks from today for homecoming here at Arkansas Tech. Have a great evening. Back at Thone Stadium at Burkle Field.